You have a friend and she's had one abusive boyfriend, then she gets to another relationship and she has a second abusive boyfriend, then she gets to another and she has a third abusive boyfriend. So there's some behavior there that you have it's, control of that you need to change. Instead of just being like, man, it's the guy's fault all the time, which it is. If you're an abusive man, that is your fault. But there's finally. still behavior on the woman's side. Don't say finally. No Nobody here is disagreeing otherwise. There are ways that people should act in the world. And sometimes it feels like we want to give advice for our utopia. In a perfect world, a girl should be able to go out to a bar, dress to the sluttiest outfit she wants, get wasted with an absolute stranger, and expect to get an Uber ride home and a guy tucking her into her couch and leaving her a glass of water and an ibuprofen and then leaving the house. But that's not the world that we live in, but it feels like that's the advice that people give for. And that's just not how it is. The reality is, is there's a lot of creepy, rapey guys out there. There's a reason why, like, 60 to 90 percent of women depending on what stat you take have had a sexual assault experience so this statement of like well men shouldn't do this men shouldn't do that i don't give a f so uh tweets flew um a little while ago and uh, a woman who says that she was sexually assaulted um through the uh, practice of stealthing right so she uh stealthing simply uh is when a person removes a condom um in the middle of sex with someone else without letting them know right and continuing on with that sex so uh that uh i think i think everyone here agrees it's sexual assault um so uh, she shared her story um then another streamer not here uh responded to it in a quite insensitive uh manner making it seem like might have been uh her fault um destiny jumped on that bandwagon uh and with similar comments right as to um where responsibility uh, should lie for, you know, one's own safety. And uh, I'll help both lose, okay? Um, people here have taken sides and uh, we'll uh, see if we can work it out. Uh, we'll start with uh, Steven to, so he can explain himself, explain his point of view. Um, then we'll go to uh, Spectre, uh, Stabby, Katie, and then Cherry, all right? Uh, Destiny. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the main takeaway that I had was that like, in any sexual encounter, I think that the onus is on both parties to make sure that they're communicating as much as possible, um, to make sure that they are asserting or reasserting boundaries if necessary, and that if somebody is feeling like that's not going to be a possible thing for them to do, if another person is being a little bit too pushy, then we should probably stop recommending those types of people engage in casual sex, because I think we're sending them into an environment so they're not fully prepared for, and we're just creating future rape victims by um, having an inappropriate level of expectations for the types of things you can encounter in sexual circumstances. Yeah, Spectre. No. Nah, nope. <laughs> no nope. sound. No sound, buddy. <laughs> no, no. We'll get back to you, Stabby. Um... I think that uh, responsibility does rest on two people um, when you're engaging in sex, or however many people are actually involved. Um, the problem I have is how quickly this entire discourse was able to say that women were not only supposed to be taking responsibility for themselves within sex, but also the stealther, any past trauma they've had, the behaviors of the good men and the bad men, it, it completely fell apart in the middle of it, and it fell into the patriarchal framing around rape from our past. Um, that rape is bad if it's a property crime or the woman is one of ours, that rape is natural, men push boundaries, that rape is something women are responsible for, but men cannot be held responsible for bad people, which is true, but not the freaking point. Neither can women be held responsible for that. So once again, we found another controversial consent, uh, consent topic that immediately, almost instantly fell into, well, let's have women do one more thing. Um, and immediately put responsibility on somebody else because it's an uncomfortable situation. And I don't think we really have prepared men to have these uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations, especially now that the world is opening up to the point where we can see that men are also victims of sexual assault and that they need a way to come forward. So we are not prepping ourselves properly for the discourse. And I want that to change. Okay, thanks so much. Hey guys, how about the hype train? We're at 53%. Help us get to level two hype train. Um, if you're appreciating the things that we do here, um, please help us out. Subs to channel, gift bits or gift subs. All right, Katie. Um, yeah, I think that was a very nice intro that Steven said. I don't know what that has to do with someone who is being sexually assaulted. Um, that doesn't seem to me like something that both people have responsibility on. I think if you're being assaulted, then um, obviously you are the victim in that situation. So it seems a bit silly to frame a situation where somebody clearly talks about being sexually assaulted that we all agree on as like 
oh, you have responsibility in this too. Um, that's fucking... I might be a retarded child, but you know, that sounds pretty retarded to me as well. Um, so, yeah. Hey, thanks so much. All right, let's try Cherry. Um, I think that it's perfectly fine for this discourse to have started, and I think there's a lot of good information and advice that you can give women, as well as to uh, warn men not to stealth and not to um, rape or assault people. And the idea that we would infantilize someone so much after an assault that we wouldn't recommend any advice to make sure it doesn't happen to them again is ridiculous. Okay, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. How about that hype train? We got 90 seconds left. Let's see if we can get to level two. Sub to the channel, give bits or give subs. Um, all right, please, Spectre. Yeah, so um, my issue, I guess, uh, I sorry, had an opening statement for um, stealthing, um, but if we're just gonna talk about the advice of like not having casual sex, right? Is that as far as I can tell, the stats seem to indicate that most sexual assaults aren't happening um during casual sex they're happening with people that the person knows more often so it feels like we're unnecessarily moralizing casual sex um and women who have it in order to kind of victim blame here which i'm a little bit uncomfortable with i understand that's not the intention obviously but that's just kind of the way it comes across also i feel like every woman that i've talked to about this this week has told me that they've been getting this kind of unsolicited advice since they were like 12 right this is not new information from them if this advice was going to actually fix the problem in any way, shape, or form, then it would have done so by now, because they just get it their entire lives, just like they're sexualized their entire lives. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it doesn't feel like it's useful to call out random people on the internet and uh, just tell them to do better at saying no or stop having casual sex, even if that is a good prescription that you may give a friend. Okay, please, let's uh, open it up. Yeah. I think it's really weird to talk about the infantilization of women while giving the most basic lukewarm advice that everybody already knows. Like to pretend like women are going out there confused about how they should protect themselves or whatever. I think that's the height of infantilization. Like you clearly don't understand any of the experience if you think women in general need this shitty meaningless empty advice while they're being like sexually assaulted okay i think so in terms of shitty meaningless empty advice 99 percent of talks i hear about consent are guys don't rape that's basically the extent of all of these conversations so i agree there's a lot of shitty meaningless advice out there um, but then i mean if you agree that this advice can be wasted on some people then you probably agree then with the broader prescription if you're not capable of asserting a boundary during sex you probably shouldn't be pursuing casual sexual relationships right yeah i think the issue is that I could talk to you about how women should, com how we can improve communication during like uh, sexual engagements, okay? I talked about it on my podcast. We talked about it on Lily uh, a week ago or two weeks ago. We can have those conversations. Those conversations cannot happen as like the aftermath of someone talking about their sexual assault. So I get Why that not? that's something that is now important to you and that you want to talk about. Why not? Because it's extremely destructive discourse, which is why we're all on this panel now. Because wait, a lot wait, of people wait, hold on, wait. We hurt. can't we can't have a conversation after an event happens about how to avoid like situations no, like that in the future. Your response to someone sharing about a sexual assault that they had cannot be um like minimizing their experience and giving meaningless advice because you actually want to talk about how women should communicate more during sex. What this the, woman has shared about is not sex. It's sexual assault. It's okay, different. I think we, okay, for I think we should stop using the word sexual assault. It's really cringe. It doesn't get us anywhere in this conversation. Number Do one. Do you want me to say then, rape? I want to say rape. Uh I just I it's like an attempt to like moralize the fuck out of the conversation with like no. really Do silly you think still thing mm -hmm. is sexual assault? Kind of, but like when we've brought yeah, in the, I don't brought think in the you do. okay, do you think sexual assault is worse than assault? Uh, me personally, no. Okay, it, it's just it's one of those words. It's like so nebulous now that like sexual assault can mean everything from like a guy touched your ass to a guy like tried to rape you. So okay, I just think so that I calling get... something so so because what you're saying is trying to say like it's not reasonable to expect a woman to expect to be able to say something during a quote unquote sexual assault. Well, for a lot of those types of sexual assault, it absolutely is, and for a lot of other types of sexual assault, well maybe not. But when you just call it like sexual assault over and over again, you're trying to charge it so much that it's like unfathomable that somebody could no. say like, hey, maybe you should stop this. Okay, so. The reason why I say sexual assault, I understand that you think sexual assault and like rape are charged uh, like words, 
because they imply like a lot of blame and shit like that and because you think that there's like a spectrum to rape which i definitely agree with you i made all the points that i heard you make with like erudite and all that shit but when we're talking about the case that you retweeted and responded to, um, that has nothing to do with someone speaking out. You can be like mugged and you can still fight back and you're still the victim, but we don't expect people to fight back when they're being mugged. And if you are telling them to do that, we're not then talking maybe you're about a retarded being, We're not child talking too. about being mugged or assaulted though. Yeah, can we so, can so, we like frame so, this so, outside so, of so, violence? So, so, so also just to clarify, okay. so we're not moralizing, we're being descriptive, right? Like you're these are terms with you're definitions, right? The, the, no, I, mean, I don't think I'm, I'm, interested, I'm not interested in having a semantic argument. Hold on, 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 hold Right. Like, I'm not interested in having a semantic argument. Like, we don't have to agree on the definition of words. Like, we can just say that, like, like this is a bad thing for people to do. It should probably be illegal in some way, shape, or form for people to stealth due to the fact that it is non-consensually, like, basically penetrating due to the fact that there was an agreement at the beginning of sex that this person was going to have a condom on. They removed the condom. It's yeah, generally something that's probably yeah, you don't do. Yeah. Okay, we, so we let's just call it yeah. that. Yeah, it's actually called it's actually called sexual battery. Everybody who's trying to get this on the books as a law, um, California's done it. It's actually one of the things that's in sexual battery, and it's also consistent with the way that um, the FBI um, tracks and uh, reports crimes and does crime reporting from all the police departments in America. So it would actually be known as sexual battery. So we can call it sexual battery for sure. Okay, but we're not but... going to wait, wait, wait. I don't think we should ever, ever go, OK, well, this term is a little harsh because I, I don't know who you think your arguments are going to be helping because your arguments are not helping men. Men just now showed that they're this defensive about men do better type of tweets. And it's no, so men are being looked at as bad people and it's not helping women because we're the ones getting assaulted more often than men. And when men are assaulted, it's usually by men. So you're not helping anybody except the assailants because you're letting them have a shield. So don't give them the shield. This is sexual okay. battery. Currently, that's the only law we have on the books and that's what it okay, calls so it. Okay, so regardless like of what we, Hold on, I, I just right. wanna finish my point. Oh, did you not finish? Okay, finish your point. No, then. I we didn't. We gotta go straight to Cherry then. All right, so semantic aside, definitions aside, like legal definitions aside, great. I think the larger point here was the way that it was being uh, treated on Twitter, right? Like instead of going straight to giving personal advice that again these women have probably already been told hey if you keep on getting assaulted and having these bad experiences with these really shitty men maybe you should stop going like out and like casually hooking up with people i guarantee you her friends have told her that um I... if that is what is happening which is not what was happening with this individual as far as we can tell but that's a whole other thing what would probably be better is having a conversation about how the way that we teach people about consent is very toxic in our society, right? Your takes in the past regarding, you know, obtaining consent versus uh, consent being something that is just kind of uh, happened upon and built, right? Not making it a goal that the guy is trying to achieve. Like, that would be a conversation that you can have, be constructive, probably would... Yeah, because you can always and... talk on the man side, but you cannot. T you can't say a single thing that a woman could do to improve these types of consensual interactions. It's, it's impossible. It wasn't a consensual women. interaction. It was. They were fucking. That was the consensual part. So they were in a sexual interaction. And the consent was removed when he stealthed her. That the is the entire that point. That is the problem with this conversation: is the words like sexual assault, sexual battery, rape, or whatever. It all loads this entire conversation. Everything minus taking the condom off was a consensual act, okay? And the problem with taking, taking the condom off, condom would you off just listen to me, holy shit. The problem with taking the condom off and why it's a violation of someone's consent is that you could pass disease, you can impregnate someone. That's the part of the sex that they did not want. The rest of the sex was fine. Stop acting like this is like a violent thing that fucking happened. Oh. Okay, so stop acting like so stop acting like after a stealthing happens, women are not in worse positions if they actually try to stop the man. One, there's the fights that can happen after they find out after the sex act is complete and they're like, what the fuck is this? Because I think we women know exactly what we're talking about when we're like, oh, he wasn't wearing a condom. When we actually confront those men, then we're faced with violence. You don't get to tell me the difference. You don't get to tell me because I've had both, Cherry. I've had both. I have had, well, more than just two, but I'm trying to tell you, I've had two kinds of assault. I am a military rape survivor 
and I have had the very violent assault. And then I've had the other assaults that are difficult, that can lead to violence when you say, no, we're done now because you took the condom off. Then it if sounds like we were... need to tell women to stop having casual sex. We need to listen to the Christians. Wait, wait, no, no, no. I want to always say that. Let me finish my I would agree with the destiny on that. Can I agree with destiny on that? Yeah. If we're really going to say that a woman destiny? can't even speak up okay. when there's like okay. some, when a man is doing something violent around us, then we should say we need to have way less or no casual sex in society. Beautiful. I'm on your side here. Let's actually go the full conservative route and make sure that women can't have sex. And now it's time to criminalize and imprison men for pressuring for sex or even wanting it. Because that's where that's going to lead. Is that what you want? Because if that's what you want, that's where this conversation can go. And we can actually Wait, start no, dealing with true. the criminality of men when it comes to sexual aggression. Hold on, pressuring somebody for sex? How would you even begin to lock somebody up like that? If I ask you, do you want to have sex? You said, you said sex? no more, you said no more casual sex. You said no more casual sex. So where are the men's responsibilities? I thought you were all about responsibility here. Let's do no this. More Come on. No more casual sex means that outside yeah. of like committed relationships, marriage, you probably marriage. Be, no, no, no. Let's just there do it. The other do you think marriage. stealthing oh, happens okay. in committed so relationships? Destiny, like destiny, okay. destiny, destiny, I, I destiny. Are backing up? Destiny. Um, yeah. So casual sexual. I, I, I don't, I don't know how many grades like back I need to go to explain like the difference between like a casual sexual experience versus like a, a sexual experience in a relationship. If I need to like explain the difference between those two, I can. I didn't think I'd have to on this. I didn't know that's where we were at in this conversation. But for everybody else that's keeping up, a casual sexual relationship should probably be avoided if it's happening with people you're having a one night stand with you don't have any like longer term like committed relationship with. Because the chances for that person to push a boundary are probably going to be higher than within a committed relationship with somebody that you trust. Um, I've heard five different 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 definitions of casual sex this week. So if we could clarify it, that'd be great. I think that'd probably be helpful. Sure. Casual sex is with people that you're not dating or have long-term dating relationships with. And casual, uh, or I'm sorry, that that would be non-casual sex. It'd be like committed relationships. Like casual sex is like a one-night stand or something like that. But you know that that's not where most, um, I, I can't happened. even say sexual assault, right? What should I say? When... <laughs> okay, we can talk in terms of probabilities. Oh my that, god. Okay, no. then, okay, yeah, so then we either, if if a woman is in a relationship and her boyfriend is doing something that is perceived that she either thinks she's, she's being sexually assaulted or raped or whatever, or there's a boundary being pushed, if you can't say something there, then just don't be in relationships. I don't know I don't know what to say to you. You you have to be treated like a child, essentially, because you can never stand up for yourself, or you have to hope you're giving all the power then to the man in all of these circumstances for whether or not he's going to decide to rape you, since it's just impossible as a woman to ever assert a boundary otherwise. If that's the type of world you want to live in, you can. If but you can I wish say, people if you like can you say would just that, stop wait. talking publicly. Jesus Christ. If you can say that, wait a second. If you can say that, then women don't own rape, men do. So maybe men aren't mature enough and maybe men are too criminal to have sex. That is an overwhelmingly horrific statement. But, uh, but you're wait, going with no, this. No, 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 hold on. I would agree with you. If you're a man that stealths somebody or tries to get somebody intoxicated to the point they can't say no or anything else, I would say, yeah, you shouldn't be fucking women either. Did you think that's a hard buy for me? What? So that's my point. If you're going to sit there and say that maybe these women are not mature enough to be having casual sex while completely skipping over the fact that the vast majority of any kind of, uh, we can call it battery, stealthing assault, any of those things, those are happening from people we already trust. I saw that come up on Twitter as well. People started talking about, if you don't trust him, you should not be having sex with him. Bitch, most of these things are happening with the people we trust. Period. End of sentence. The FBI yeah. has confirmed it. That doesn't change Interpol anything. Interpol has confirmed it. It's just one anything. part of it. Yeah, and that doesn't change anything that I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. It is one part of it. So if it's, you're going to fix the casual sex part of it, it's let's the fix the casual part sex part of it and criminalize right. men over this. And if that's too far, then you, you said it was down. criminal. You said something was criminalized. What is no, that it's not. It's only no, illegal in California. It's only on the. It's only on the. It's only on the books as a law in California is illegal. It's only one state. Yeah, and so, it's a category so, yeah, of sexual that is a problem. assault called if, sexual if, if we want to talk about like the sexual abuse that can happen within relationships, that's a different conversation then. Should women be able to speak up if a man is pushing a boundary? Th th if you don't, if you think that a woman can't, then you shouldn't be encouraging women in general to have casual sex because that pushing is part of every sexual interaction. Are people is that are negotiating- Is stealthing pushing a boundary? It do you absolutely think that can it's be violating. It's the, breaking yeah. a boundary. There's a difference. 
Okay, if you wanna say breaking a boundary instead of pushing a boundary, that's fine as well. But I'm telling you that in most sexual interactions, a lot of people don't talk about everything that happens beforehand. And a lot of these things are figured out like on the spot. And sometimes people change their mind in the middle of a situation, it happens. If you're not capable of having a mature adult conversation during sex but while it's happening, then you shouldn't be having casual this sex. This entire thing started from you assuming a woman talking about being stealth did not have the emotional maturity to do the things that you're saying, because which were all assumptions. It, she said it was, was awkward. All assumptions that you made, right? Be, she said it was awkward. I don't need to assume. Can I define you're awkward? Not, she can I said define it was awkward. awkward. I guess there's can no I, context. Oh, 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 okay, uh, so uh, we'll go with Stabby. Spectre, I know you had something to say, so we'll go to you. Um, I'm not sure if you have something to say uh, as well, Cherry, but Stabby, please. Okay, I want to define awkward for you, Destiny, here really quickly. Um, when I was trying to just, at first I started fighting and then I learned really quickly I was outnumbered and I was fucked, okay? Because that's how things are in the military. I went from, this is very it, terrifying to this is awkward, how do I deal with this? I can define awkward for you. Awkward can be anything from, oh God, he just texted me again, cringe. Or it can actually be, is this a moment in my life where I can actually stand up for myself or am I going to die? How do I get out of this? Awkward can be freezing. I've I never in my life heard somebody describe a scenario. Don't ever talk about my experience. It's clearly you're fucking lost. Okay? I, I, that's but what also, I'm trying to say. I, that's great, that's but also, why I'm just saying, you cannot I have say never heard, things. no, no. When somebody uses words, they mean things. That's not an awkward scenario. You that's just said idea. words weren't allowed to mean things that you didn't it like. Could, you could, just no, said that. That's, holy shit. Saying something is scary or terrifying or frightening. These are words that convey that feeling. When you say something is awkward, there's not usually a sense of danger there. That's not usually how the word awkward is used. I've never in my life heard somebody say something. So you heard like said about how this person conceptualized their own like uh, stealthing situation? <laughs> From the man who's saying words mean things for this, but just said words don't mean the same thing. She you. said the reason awkward. Why I'm trying to say, okay. The reason why maybe I don't she like said awkward. It. Wait, maybe she said awkward because people like you are saying that words like terrified for my life. Well, that's charged. Not all men, sweetheart. Maybe that's why she used the word awkward. You don't, don't know why she used the word awkward. The reason why I don't like it, it when called. people like have you have taken the word rape or sexual assault and expanded it so much is it used to be that 10 years ago, if somebody said they were raped or sexual assaulted, we're talking about a pretty narrow set of experiences that are incredibly fucking horrific. But now when we talk about like rape or sexual assault, some of these experiences don't aren't even a big deal, but they're still called rape or sexual assault. And you wanna bring all of the chargedness of a rape in an alleyway to a boyfriend, um, tried to have sex with his girlfriend while they were sleeping and she didn't really wanna do it. And then they woke up so, and they talked. And then, so who's the issue that I have trying to do this is Who's the comparing issue. that chargedness? When you bring up the word rape or sexual assault, that's what you're trying to bring to the forefront of somebody's mind. No, if you're, if you're, I don't care about your If you're morally comfort. loading, if it's you're morally loading, oh my god, this is so... Okay, uh, if you're morally loading descriptive terms, then that is not like it's the not a person who's using it's, it as descriptive the terms. The term problem. is to be loaded. No, I understand how people are definition of okay. rape. Oh my okay. god, we got please. multiple people here. All right, Spectre. Like, how how do you feel like it's loaded? It's just a legal definition of a term. It's because like, that's not stealthing what we're talking is considered about. rape in Sweden. It's not considered no, even no, sexual not, assault in 49 U.S. states. Like, so who, I don't care about here, this. So this is something that I would consider kind of rapey, okay? And some people have come up with this in relationships before, okay? Um, one partner is sleeping, the other partner is awake. They haven't had a, a, a discussion about like waking somebody up with sex, but one partner does it, and then the other partner starts waking up. And they're like, oh, I'm not really into this. I don't. We should have talked this morning. And the guy's like, oh, okay, right? Now theoretically, you get up a conversation the next day, like, oh yeah, like last night was really awkward. My boyfriend raped me, and it's like, holy shit. Technically, maybe, yeah, but like using the word like that in that circumstance is like, holy shit, like you are bringing in so much stuff Did when you use words happen? like rape or sexual assault that you're, what? Did that happen or are you just making up a scenario? Okay, Who so are you fighting? I, I Who is saying that they're no going to be raped from that night? No what are you talking people about? Sexual experiences, I don't know how to communicate with you, but this is a relatively common thing that comes up where when people are tired or sleeping, another partner tries to have sex with them. No, I know that part. Friend. I don't understand who is the retarded child that says that their boyfriend raped them at night because, because when you're, they didn't because like Because when you're saying- Who ever told because, that to you? Because you just did when you said, this guy raped me when he stealthed me. Like, holy shit, like slow the fuck down. You're having sex, you can send it to sex, you're having a good time, and then somebody takes the comment, which is really horrible. I think you don't understand the definition of rape. No, no, and it's like, just, oh shit, okay. I, look, so like, I'm, I'll I, I'm going to, I'm going to um, extend nope. an olive branch. 
I do think that the word rape has really extended its definition. I don't think it's always wrong, but I think there are cases like the case that you mentioned, the hypothetical of like someone being in a relationship and like doing something to their sleeping partner that need a different word. We need more words. We need more words to, to uh, describe things. So I understand that right now there's an issue where we're lacking in ways to linguistically, linguistically explain situations. So I understand. I have the same issue. I can't talk about sexual experiences that sexual assault experiences that I have that would qualify as rape, but I don't call it rape because I understand that if I'll tell that to people, that would be charged and that might put implications on the men that I've been with when I realized that it was more complicated than that. And I can acknowledge my part in that, but that is not Sure, I'm just saying rape. that my issue is that like, here is something, here are two statements that make sense, but when you put them back to back, they're fucked, okay? Stealthing okay. is a form of rape, okay, sure. It's not reasonable to expect a woman to just tell a man to stop raping her. Well, that second statement is also kind of true, but it doesn't really apply to stealthing. If a guy is like violently on top of you, for something, then saying that like, well, the woman should just assert her boundary, that's really stupid. Obviously so, in that circumstance, we wouldn't expect it. Mm -hmm. But if a guy, you see a guy trying to sneak a condom off or he's fucking you and you realize you took, he took his condom off, of course in that circumstance, you can say something. This is why I, I don't like calling it rape because we, we say, well, these are, the, uh, these are the certain responses we can have to rapes. It's like, okay, well, hold on. There's a totally different set of like classes for what we can say is happening or not happening. And then we can expect different responses based on what's happening happening too. So is your concern that um, there'll be a situation, because the, the girl that you retweeted, that wasn't the case, and you know that because everything came up. So the scenario that you just posed- And then he retweeted mind waves, just to clarify before we get stuck on that. Argument. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, um, so we know that wasn't the case with her, but let's say there's a guy and a girl, and the guy is pushing boundaries or breaking boundaries. And apparently there's no difference between these two things, although there, there clearly is. And then he takes the condom midway and then the girl doesn't bring herself to be like, hey, what the fuck? So do you then, are you worried that later when she'll talk to other people about it, she'll call him a rapist and that would be like very detrimental to that person? Is that no, what, what this why is coming from? Why the fuck would from? I care about that per Why would I care about the guy at all in this circumstance? I'm not talking about the guy. I don't give a fuck about his reputation. Oh, you're trying to minimize pain for women. I'm not trying to minimize shame. pain. I'm trying to give a realistic set of behaviors and a sexual encounter that if you can't exhibit, you shouldn't be engaging in casual sex. Yeah, if while I, claiming okay. that we infantilize women by giving me a bunch of shitty advice I don't need to protect myself during if sex. If you've gotten stealth by three guys in a row and violently raped by another, apparently you need advice to stop having casual See, sex. See, I'm it really didn't happy. No, 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 Katie, finish your point. Um, Cherry, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you, and then we'll go to Stabby afterwards. Katie. I'm really happy you said that. I think that the fact that you can talk about being stealthed by three different guys and then mention that there was one case of actual violent rape that you described this entire time that there's a difference. And you say, well, if four different or three different people sexually assaulted you, guess there's something fucked up about you that you need to learn to change that situation. And yes, that statement, yeah, yes. yeah. You, this is we, how like, what's we're, wrong with that. If you, have, if you have a friend and she's had one abusive boyfriend, then she gets to another issue and she has a second abusive boyfriend, then she gets to another and she has a third abusive boyfriend. So there's some behavior there that you have it's, control of that you need to change. Instead of just being like, man, it's the guy's fault all the time, which it is. If you're an abusive man, that is your fault. But there's finally. still behavior on the woman's side. Don't say finally. No Nobody here is disagreeing opposite. otherwise. Yeah, what you need to say is, hey, maybe there's some behavior that you can exhibit rather than this big soy jerk circle jerk of like, yes, queening, it's all the men's who's, fault. They keep jumping from like, really, jerking, you are right now, you can, victim. Tell you, can tell, you can tell somebody, hey, make different choices. Something is obviously not working here. Let's change the fucking plan. I can. I don't think you can. You don't even, you think if a woman is raped three times by three different men, there's something that she's doing wrong. You didn't talk to this person. You don't know anything about them. How can you talk about infantilization of women when you're making a lot of assumptions about this person you don't even fucking know? Katie, do, do you know them? No, I don't know them. I don't know anything okay. about them. So I wouldn't dare to give advice that I have no place giving. Yeah, so if I don't know somebody and I hear that they find themselves in a um, an abusive situation over and over and over again, I assume that that mm -hmm. person doesn't know how to draw boundaries for themselves. Not so much that, obviously, other people don't respect their boundaries, but I would be alarmed and 
I wonder if they know how to respect their own boundaries. I would tell them to take a step back and to probably stop dating for a while until they can really respect their own boundaries. Do you think do you that's you are? Do you understand why stop dating is very different advice than stop having casual sex? Casual and yeah, sex implies stop like promiscuity. Is- no, stop what? dating is mild, yeah, and no, stop no, having casual no, no, sex no, 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 no. is more no. extreme. But they're both solid fucking advice. No, there, no, no, no. So stop, stop casually dating. Only address. Sorry, casual sex only addresses outside of relationship. That's how we defined it. Yeah, Destiny. Yeah. Okay. So it feels like we're moralizing these girls. Like, well, the reason that you're getting assaulted is because you're a slut. It's not like, more- a lot of times. What? No, it's no, because you she are, makes bad you choices. Are putting you see, so much that's what she's on getting it, right. Oh my god. In this fucking conversation. Okay. Katie had it. Destiny, I wanted to, I have two things. First, I wanted to tell you exactly what the FBI's definition of rape is. I don't really it's, care. I don't care if of you care or not. You because don't. Using it in It's not relevant to the conversation. So right now, it's not, it's not good enough. enough. It, hasn't, it hasn't been changed good enough. It's still only penetration. But the FBI defines it as penetration, no matter how slight, of the vagina or anus with any body part or object or oral penetration by a sex organ of another person without the consent of the victim. This includes any time you've removed consent. It used to be the carnal knowledge of only a female forcibly against her will, only by a male. And so only men were rapists at that time. Now it can be anyone, which I think is, it's not expanded enough, but this is fantastic because we absolutely have to have full equality, including in who goes to prison. So I agree. I actually, no, 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 let let her finish. Sabi's waiting, Sabi's waiting. Let let her finish, please. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's your definition right there. But when you were saying some of the other stuff, I've heard the same exact arguments and I know that's not what you were saying to me. I get it, Destiny. I'm not saying you were saying that to me, but I have heard that before that maybe it's you and where you are. And do you know what they were telling me? They were telling me that I was in the United States military and my job was to do their job as well as do their job on my back. That's literally a saying in the army. Okay, I don't care about your personal experiences. You can't keep bringing this up to try to like win the argument, okay? No, 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 it's not to win the argument. It is total bullshit. No, 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 I don't care. I don't, you, okay, the FBI shit you can cite is fine, but you can't keep throwing a personal story at me over and over again. No, no, I'm telling you exactly why women get exactly what you just said from other people when we're trying to actually get our life back in order. And people are telling women, this is on you. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Joining the military isn't doing something wrong. Sure. Well, how, many women, how many women out there right now are going out hearing men shouldn't rape, men shouldn't rape, rape, men shouldn't rape. Women don't have to do anything. Men should just be better. Not and specific they go out, and then they go out, said and women shouldn't do out, anything. And then they go Nobody out and that. they end up getting into casual sexual relationships and then they end up getting raped on one night stands and shit on Tinder or whatever over and over again because they haven't been told any precautions they can take. They haven't told any action they could do. They're told that- That's not happening. Sponsor- that is it's so not retarded. Ha- sexual assault and rape out of- in these circumstances are like at all time highs. You don't think that casual sex is like at all time highs? What do you mean it's not happening? Eight out of ten not rapes what the majority are committed by someone known to the victim beforehand, not someone they're having casual sex with. Holy shit. No, no, hold on. Knowing somebody beforehand does not mean you're not having casual sex. What are you talking about? A friend that you like decide to have a one night stand with or somebody you meet you've talked to for a couple weeks and you have a one night stand with is somebody that you know. It's not like a, when they say stranger, that 7% figure there. How long do I have to be? Literally like, a, like a person like in an alleyway raping you or some crazy shit like that. How, how, how long do I have to be like, okay, so how long do I have to be friends with benefits with somebody before it's not casual sex anymore? Before, like, I should know them enough to, like, be able to trust that they're not going to take a condom off in the middle of having sex with it's me. It's going to vary based on the relationship. If you've been a close friend with somebody for, like, four years, and then you have a one-night stand, I don't know if I would consider that, quote-unquote, casual sex. Because there's probably a much higher level of trust you have with that person, or a much higher yeah. level of comfort so you have being able to— your advice is useless? Man, there's a, oh man. It's like, you guys are like rape creators in here. You're like manufacturing the future rape victims yes, of the world. Yes, we just, are the rape congratulations, creators. Congratulations. Okay? Not Holy the shit. big streamer guy oh talking God. about the responsibility of women as they're getting raped. You're not it's even talking about consensual no. sexual situations. No, I, here and I, here you are. Like, if you're a woman and something is about to happen, just lay there because the guy might kill you, LOL. When like did you, you ever you, fucking say that? You don't because, ask me what I think women should do in consensual situations. Okay, Katie, you what keep what do, you, okay, Katie, what do you think a woman should do if she sees that a guy is taking a condom off to go and fuck her while they're while they've been fucking? What do you think the woman should do? If she does, if she, they agreed to not have the condom. Yep. I no, no. If, she... they, if they agreed to have a condom and then the guy okay. tries to stealth her and she notices it, what do you think the woman should do? I would hope she could say something. I don't know and if she it, can. And, okay. So if there's a woman that tells you, if a guy did that to me, I don't think I could say anything. What would you give advice to that woman for? What would you tell her? Keep having casual sex and hope you don't run into that? Or maybe you should work on that before you See, start having casual sex. 
I wouldn't assume that she's having casual sex. Why, from why, that can you answer that statement. question or are you going to pivot really hard? Can you ask are me you again? Are you going to not interrupt her? Do you not think that if, man if, and... if, a friend, if a friend tells you, if a guy would have stealthed me, I don't know if I could actually say anything to him. Right. And I'm on Tinder and I'm, you know, talking to guys. If she says that, that she says that thing to you, would you tell her, well, hey, listen, um, if it happens, like get raped, LOL. Or would you tell her, hey, maybe you shouldn't be engaging in casual sex until you can figure out how to establish or reinforce those boundaries during sex? I will so tell I... her. Yeah, Spectre. No, no, Katie, Katie. <laughs> no, never mind. Well, what is the answer? What would you tell that friend? I, I would tell her that I hope that she can try to work on um like methods for her to try to like being able to assert her like autonomy but Before if she has certain sense. trauma triggers if she has certain trauma triggers that are going to lead to her not being able to assert that uh, and she still wants to engage in that behavior then i would tell her that i hope no one would ever do that to her so you're a rape victim creator. You're like, every rapist dream is that a girl has a friend like you that tells her friend with trauma to go out and keep fucking guys. And if she happens to run into a guy that's creepy, pushes boundaries and You think and boundaries, I'm a rape creator? Rape yes. Are you talking Absolutely. about the responsibility yes. of women is helping women? But yeah, for you both understand sides, he's sex telling sex. women to get out of dangerous situations, right, Katie? What? You you understand that what he's saying is giving advice to women to get them out of dangerous situations. You know, right? I think I think I'm very concerned about the safety of women. I think all women should stay in their houses all the time. Uh, that would keep women hyperbole. very safe. There it is. There is. That the would keep them yes. very very safe. Because going outside is the same as just fucking somebody. It's the same level of risk. Absolutely. It's fucking I didn't somebody think, is I didn't not the same as someone okay. stealthing you. I'm sorry that right. you don't that's understand funny. the difference. It's really sad because you're meant to be an adult. So, hold on. I have sorry, sorry, hold on. I got it. I, I, I got it. Adult. I'm a League of Legends player, to be clear. I got to get Spectre. Spectre's been waiting. Uh, we'll go to Savvy Chair. Right. So, I don't think that there's anything to me that would indicate that stealthing is more likely to happen in a casual sex uh, thing than a committed relationship. I think that women are actually uh, have a worse time and may find it harder to draw boundaries in some cases in a committed relationship due to the other power dynamics at play there. That being said, one thing that I think would be probably more healthy to talk about and address if you want to give this kind of advice would be that women are not socialized to favor confrontation when caught in situations like these. These are not problems that are fixable overnight. So when you're just like, stop having casual sex forehead, it can come off as a little bit victim blamey. Okay, when, you, when we say it doesn't get fixed, hold on. Uh, when sorry, we just, say it can't get fixed, are, are, are you done, Spectre? So make sure he's been waiting. Oh, Spectre, are you done? It's just that when your response is just stop having casual sex to someone who was not soliciting advice from you and has very likely received the advice several times from other people, it comes across as victim blaming when all they're wanting to do is basically vent, reflect, and yeah, share their experience on the internet. I don't know. Okay, Cherry, if you want to uh, interact with that, or Steven, which one or the other? Yeah, uh, well, what he first said, which is the, the fact that like how they're socialized is not something they can fix overnight. Ideally, then you would take a step back from having casual sex until you can like really establish those boundaries and be able to advocate for yourself during sex. Um, and then the later half, I guess now we're moving into like how to have Twitter discourse and the expectation of privacy on a public platform. I mean... If you want to get into that, we can move into that. But I, mean, I don't that's understand. What it sounded like, like you went so, for it, saying so I that like you really have a problem advice, with telling people it's... that maybe you should stop having sex for a little bit if you're uncomfortable setting boundaries. It okay? is really good like, advice, right? I, I mean... don't have an issue with that. But if it's not also like, if that's all that you're couching it with, in response to someone literally trying to sort out whether or not what they experienced was even sexual assault, because the individual in this case, at the that point wasn't that the case responded here, to. They knew it was no, wrong. No, she. They knew it was wrong, but they weren't even saying it was sexual assault until like well after they it was used retweeted. The word. It's so stupid to get hung up on the words. Like, no, they said that really they like... literally said I didn't even think that this was sexual assault until people started replying to me after my tweet got all this traction from being retweeted by, you know, streamers. Like didn't that was in the reply. Really say men need to stop doing this at the end of her second tweet. Like men need ended. to do better. No. Yeah. That was her first tweet that she said. Yeah, that, that. was in that, like her first series of tweets was this. Yeah. So it seems like she knew the behavior was wrong. Like, is yeah, that which a is. Problem? 
Yeah, because it, it's the important thing is identifying that a behavior is bad. You shouldn't let somebody do it, and you need to make sure that you can do what you can to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. This obsession with like it's got to be labeled this particular thing so you can make people feel like they were crazy victims of some horrible rape scheme is just so weird. I I don't know what I just you don't think. care how we label it. I don't okay, know why you think women think... have this weird fetish about like getting the most horrible like tag on themselves of like how bad my rape experience was. It's very confusing to me why you think that like women are just seeking out to have uh, validation while talking about the rape experiences. I think it's very well, interesting that you have that narrative. I, I, I feel I would like, like it can under... come off that way when we are like when you're having a conversation trying to give like good advice and nobody it seems like for everyone advice. hold well can Post i just finish what i'm media. saying <laughs> sure. where people are giving advice okay whether you ask for it or not it's a public platform and in in response everyone just like starts loading on what their sexual assault or their rape experiences instead of just like acknowledging like reality in a sense so it can feel like it's um I don't know, like a, a badge of honor sometimes whenever we do this type of conversation and it, it turns into like, I'm going to show you my scars and like make me show you. Sure, but that's not a response to what I said, right? Because Spectre's point was that this person, and th the whole thing that triggered Destiny was that she said it was awkward. So clearly she's not emotionally mature enough to engage in sexual relations, right? After she was stealthed, after she let someone stealth her, because that's how that works. Let's pretend that that's true, even though it's not, right? I don't um, think that's what he said. It's, it's literally so, what he said. So it I comes, didn't say it was her fault. What I'm saying is, hold on, you agreed with... Oh, I no, never you said you said it was her fault. You wanted to send women to get raped, I think is what you said. I never said you said it was her fault. <laughs> I said you repeatedly keep saying you let it happen. You think that women let themselves be stealth. Let if themselves you, if be you hurt. If you see something like that happening and you don't say something because you think it's a little awkward, then yeah, you're letting it happen for no reason. Okay. You, you can but assert a boundary But what you're arguing there. against right now is not what happened, and you know that. A after the fact, she released tweets later, but that's not what the conversation is about. The conversation is not about her particular case or her series of tweets afterwards. We can have a conversation, conversation about literally- conversation started no, from it, her. It, the conversation- The critique that I have towards you is your reaction to her. The conversation is whether or not women can be expected to ever. No, that's the conversation no, you no, no. want to have. We're not. I, no one cares about her her individual story. That's not what the discourse. A is A lot over. of people care about how you and Mindwave reacted to it and how it enforces rape culture. A okay. lot of people. Hold on, wait. wait. You can't. It's you not can't, the, the conversation that you want to have, you but it's a conversation oh, a lot of other people want to have. Rape culture is not a conversation about her particular instance. So if you want to talk about rape culture, or if you no. want to talk about her particular story, those are two separate conversations. One involves one particular story, the other is a broader conversation. The broader conversation that's happening is whether or not a woman can be expected to verbally reinforce a boundary while a guy is trying to stealth her. That's where the conversation is. And it seems like a lot of people are saying, well, it's reasonable to expect a woman to freeze up and not say anything. To which I say, why are we encouraging women to have casual sexual relationships if they can't even be expected to verbally assert a boundary if a guy is trying to break Go, it? Go, Stabby, it's fine. We're, we're back to actually what you had asked Katie, which Katie answered very well. But I want to add one additional thing because you're right back there and you're like, the conversation is about women. And the conversation didn't start as about women. So <laughs> I would answer it this way for you, okay? If a woman came to me and said that she was feeling awkward about that, I would trust the woman to be autonomous enough to know, were we having an argument before we began sex? Is it safe for me to say something about stealthing? Should I call my girlfriend and move out of the house before he gets home from work tomorrow? It doesn't matter. I trust her to be an adult enough as an autonomous human being who can vote despite being female, their destiny. I think that she can fucking handle this shit on her own and get my help as needed because she's a human fucking being and she is an adult that can vote in the United States. She's somebody who has to have her own apartment, somebody who's engaging in sex. I'm not going to sit there and think that she's a little too immature for this. And you keep coming back to it and saying like, this conversation is about women. This conversation is about this. And you're skipping over that most of this does not happen during casual sex. And most of this is not happening in the very specific parameters you're giving that you're completely overlooking so that you can continue to ask if women are responsible enough to have sex. And if it's not 
if men still think the condom is not her responsibility. I understand where you're coming from when you say that bad that good men should not be responsible for bad men. I'm on your side oh, with that. No, no, no. Okay, oh. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. What are good men, bad men? Why do you think? Have, why do you think being able to vote gives you some level of sexual maturity? Do you think an 18 year old is mature mm -hmm. enough to engage in any type of experiences or have an apartment? Yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck are you no, to no, evaluate no, the emotional no, maturity of women? I understand. I can do it very easily. If a woman says, I wouldn't feel comfortable verbally asserting a boundary in a sexual circumstance where a guy's trying to stealth me, I'd say, oh, well, you probably don't have the mental maturity or sexual maturity to engage in a casual sexual relationship. You should say you that. Didn't you didn't have the maturity to handle a woman telling you to do better. <laughs> That's so, awesome. I, so, uh, so, the, so the, the dunking... hold on. The result of my shit wasn't getting raped. It was having people say mean things to me on the internet. I don't care if people say mean things to me. The result of what but you did hurt a lot of people. The you are not the center of, the of what you did. Me, the result of me doing what I do is me having people talk shit to me on the internet, but I wouldn't engage in behavior that could result in me getting raped generally, or I would try to avoid or minimize. I don't think you understand what you did. I don't think you understand what the retweet that you did caused a lot of people to feel. I don't give a fuck that people were mean to you. A lot of people who are, who are who are sexual uh, assault survivors or victims or whatever, um, you pre-traumatize them do in you, a way. Do you think and I'm not saying that's your responsibility. Don't be on Twitter. Come on, Come on, on Kate, do you think it's reasonable has to be to triggered? Do, do you think it's reasonable to be triggered by someone else's retweet on Twitter? I think if someone else's tweet is about how you're responsible for your rape, then I would see that as pretty reasonable. Yeah. Do you Especially think that was what the tweet was? That they were responsible for their it rape? Is, it, it feels as though it suggests that a rape survivor's rape so, could have been avoided if they had taken different actions. Right? So, so you're reaching, so you're reaching feelings about a tweet oh on a public God. platform you're saying is reasonable to be triggered by. And that maybe all sexual assault and all rape victims should be triggered by by this reach. I'm sorry. I, 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 I this is this might be a derail. I'm very confused about like finding rationale and people being psychologically triggered. I'm not talking SGW lefty tr triggered. I'm talking about people are, who are though. sexual assault survivors. No, that's not the same. So when I say on, triggered, please. if you get triggered by something like that, then stay on social media. All right. Okay, so everybody just log off of social media. Everybody just stop engaging in casual sex if, if you, you're afraid that you're If you are so going triggered by seeing something in an environment like that, you haven't worked through that in therapy or whatever, then yeah, you should stay off social media. I'm sorry, but the rest so, of the world is not here to accommodate your trauma. That's why it's so called trauma. So if she's irrational. triggered, if what she's triggered, I, I think that's what can it is. Can I, can can I, I gotta be spectre. Go ahead. You've been waiting. So if the first advice that we give to women who think that they might have just experienced something that they don't know or maybe sexual assault is stay home and then get off of social media. What sort of a culture do you think that moves us in the direction of? What kind of culture does that support? A it culture that prioritizes mental health? Yes. You're not supposed to have trauma triggers for your entire life. Trauma responses are by definition irrational, okay? Being a victim is supposed to be a step along the way to recovery, but we've made being a victim the final destination on social media where we have to infinitely accommodate for an infinite number of triggers because somebody perusing somebody else's Twitter feed might have a trauma response. That's outrageous. No, yeah, that's trying to make it sound like you're having a trauma response. Let me finish. Can I finish? You're trying to make it sound like it is reasonable to accommodate every type of traumatic response that could happen if somebody sees it no, on not. Twitter. Twitter, but the reality Simply is that if you're that prone to a trauma response, you should stay outside of environments where you could be triggered like that. Right. So I wasn't talking about trauma responses on Twitter. I simply ask if our advice is to like, you know, these women stay home, right? That's the first thing that we give them advice. Wait, and stay we home. Not them. having stay casual home. sex does not mean lock yourself up in your house. You have to walk out of your house and fuck immediately? You, what do you mean stay home if you can't have casual sex? Is that the only thing you yeah, I think that we house? know what I mean. No, I don't know okay, what you're doing. Speak, speak real words instead it of doing stupid drama. It is a turn like, of phrase. Oh, well, don't go out. Don't go out. Don't don't go out to the bar. Don't go out to the club. Don't go out and hook up with people. Like, it is a turn of phrase. Can't go drinking. Oh okay. my god, dude! I'm not gonna get down to the. You know what? It. Never mind. How about just say, don't go out and have if, casual sex, because that's what I'm saying. Okay. You've been told oh, millions of times that it's not from casual sex. Most of it is from someone you know. 
Yeah. So that's the thing is that why is the first thing that we target is their behavior, right? Which does have an implication that this could have been stopped if they had behaved differently. They are a victim that is you putting a certain amount of the blame well, on them that is going to come across as victim blaming. About, do you not see not how we get there? It's not about blame. It's about agency. Do you think that there are some rapes that could be avoided if the victim had taken different actions? Oh my God. Um... Why is that the question no, no, you're no, asking? No, 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 Make him answer the fucking question. You guys talk about this subject like fucking children. Answer the fucking question. I think question. that all rapes could no, be yes, avoided. Make him answer the question. Make him answer the question. Yes, you think yes, no, okay. that's that's an so, easy yes, so, okay. obviously. And that However, means boundaries... the criticism there was invalid because there are steps that people can take. Victims can have agency to take steps to avoid rape. So don't act like it's so ridiculous so, to act otherwise. But so it wasn't the... that hyperbole when they said that all rapes could be avoided if women just never left their houses, right? It wasn't a hyperbole. We can prevent all rapes if we just have like an armed guard in front, like a, a, an army of uh, like good castrated men around every single woman. We'll prevent rape. Let's for just women do that. Like you, Katie, maybe that is men. the answer. Don't yes, yes. Rape. I would. I think the unsullied should come, and for the women that can't figure out how to leave their house without having, I guess, a casual sexual encounter where they can't assert their boundaries. Yes, for those women, yes, that is the answer, Katie. You know. Yeah. What, do you know what also is very That's unhelpful? To to solving people for no. Hold on. Do you know what is very unhelpful as far as like getting people away from being stuck in this trauma loop that you're talking about? What? Triggering them on Twitter, retweeting them. Avoiding like, triggers in mental health, avoiding triggers is called accommodation and it doesn't help your symptoms, it makes them worse. You That's know not nothing true. about mental health. We're, we're, Every we're single we're thing you've said please. about mental health in the last okay. months have been fucking retardation. You understand nothing about trauma. Can we just acknowledge that he's not the one using the art word on the panel? For once. Yeah, it, it, I just, yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay. But okay. can we also, I, I just want to say, I feel like we're we're going the whole like sex positivity route, like allow these women to engage in casual sex if they want to engage in casual sex. And then at the same time, letting them know that they are always at risk of being violated, raped, assaulted, and that any sexual encounter that they have, they can be overpowered at any time. Do you understand how this is like, this is sort of mind fucky? Yeah. Did your mind just get fucked, Stabby? We, I didn't know that until now. <laughs> Did you? What, you guys act like okay, women are just like this is new information to me. Pinball, waiting for a man to just fucking. Okay. Cherry. Dabby, please. Yeah, what's up? Okay. So you're going to tell me that this is all on sex positivity, despite the fact that. No, I'm saying that, that these messages are like contradictory and then they wouldn't be sex positive. Okay. Another contradictory statement is that um, women have to be responsible for the behaviors of men they're having sex with and have to be responsible for trusting them and have to be responsible for how they're I, engaging with everything while simultaneously not saying that the men who are doing this are responsible and were before the internet, were before sex positivity, were before women were actually allowed to go outside. So you're so really having I, a freaking problem trying to figure this out here, I see. I would, I would super disagree because I think men are responsible in that regard too because I think men can be raped and violated and have their boundaries pushed and not respect their own boundaries. So I, I would include them in this. So should those men also not engage in this casual sex? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. At least that's consistent. So let's go I'm with Destiny and what consistent. Destiny's saying. What about let's what go. Saying? Let's go with what Destiny was saying. Like mm -hmm. these women should not be having casual sex. How are we going to enforce this? And since it's since we are doing this to avoid the victims, what do we do about the victims that we have now? And what is your advice then to the? actual person stealthing the condom, the people who are assaulting people. Like, what's your advice now? Since we have already made sure that the victims make sure they stay inside, stay away from this problem, what would you say about the actual criminals, which is who we should be focused on in the first place? Now what? Well, now what fo you have to say? Focusing on only the criminals removes all agency from the victims. That's why you focus I'm not, on- I'm not, I'm not. We just okay. did this. We that's just great. did okay. this. Okay. We're focusing but on- number two, but then, Yeah, so what we would tell the guy that's doing it is the same thing that we've been repeating ad nauseum for the past three decades. Don't rape. Don't do shit like that. It's creepy. It's weird. It's bad. Don't do it. That's the best you could do. If a guy wants to rape somebody, they're probably not open to advice from me. I don't know what I could say. If there's a guy that's willing to push that hard or to do something that disrespectful, me saying like, hey man, maybe you shouldn't do that, doesn't sound like he's gonna take my advice very well there. Are men, oh, are lucky men there's a bunch of online sorry, sorry, women who will take your advice. Let's uh, go to Steffi. <laughs> yeah, um, so you're telling me that 
there right now online advice we're giving to men is, Hey guys, don't stealth. I mean, I know it might be a joke. I know there might be some, you know, locker room talk. We just had a president. Everybody was talking about this. We just had somebody doing this. You don't think that that's going to help anything and help young men, because I'm sorry. I haven't seen anything on social media going, guys, we've got to look out after each other. This is a toxic joke don't stealth condoms, et cetera. You could maybe help back that up a little bit, but no, you're too busy going. Maybe women are too childish, immature, the arsler to be having casual sex and skipping over that most of these things aren't happening during casual sex. No, You've got to focus saying, on the You want to talk about Ooh. sexual assault that happens in the context of a relationship? That's a totally different discussion. We can have that discussion. It's a different type of discussion. We're talking yeah, about that's where most stealthing of, happens. It, 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 yeah. It's a different type of conversation. The, if you want to have advice that you give to people. The issue is that when I peruse the internet, I see a ton of advice given to guys. Don't rape, don't be creepy, don't force women to drink, don't do all these things. I see that- Don't over, rape over, and don't over, be over, creepy over, is not advice. Over again. Yeah, I know because- We it's already bullshit, give right? advice but, to women on how to avoid rape from their, like when they're 12 years old. So like, I get problem is Yes, technically there's things that no, these women can be doing to reduce the- like, we, we do not tell women how to avoid rape because nobody even knows what the you. fuck rape is or how it happens, okay? Because- There's a class. There's a class in the schools that are taught to middle schoolers yeah. where when we do sexual education for the children mm -hmm. and we separate the boys and the girls, we actually have to tell them all of the different things they have to look out for. And then the adults that are safe to go to, these are 12 and 13 year olds, Destiny. Uh, I don't know what the hell world you think you're living in or what alternate reality you might be in right now, but that is the fucking reality. We are the training little girls not little, to get fucking raped. The problem it's is that every parent that has told their child not to wear like exposing clothes. That's yeah, not yeah, advice, you, thank right? Thank for proving my point. The problem is that rape mm -hmm. or non-consensual actions are very complicated and nuanced and difficult to talk about because not rape doesn't, it can be. There's lots of conversations that can be had about the nuances of trying to figure out what is consensual or not consensual during a sexual encounter. It's a very complicated thing. But the most we ever give when it comes to advice is, okay, well, men don't rape or pressure people and uh, women, uh, make sure you don't drink something when somebody offers you to bark and that's it. We don't have conversations about like, well, what if people are changing their desires in the middle of a sexual encounter? Or what's an appropriate way to bring up something if somebody, you know, wants to try a position or doesn't? Or what if somebody said previously, I don't want to do this thing. And in the middle of an encounter, maybe they do want to do this thing. We don't okay. ever have any of those conversations, so, which is where a lot of the quote unquote rape can happen. When a person is leaning into something over and over again and it's not really rape they're not really technically forcing themselves but if they do it enough and they word it right these are where a lot of the rapes where most rapes happen it's not just a guy throwing himself on a girl or finding a girl that's scantily clad and raping her it usually happens within the nuance of a sexual encounter and we have no penetration into that thing all we talk about is men don't rape and women uh don't drink drugs or take drugs that you're offered from strangers that that's where the only the conversation happens and this is where the least amount of rapes happen this is the least interesting conversation the most important conversation is what happens within the actual sexual encounter itself Okay, Katie, so and then, gonna, Katie, Katie, Katie the inspector, told. Katie the inspector. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, I, I understand that you don't have those conversations and maybe you don't see them on your Twitter feed, but I had that conversation two weeks ago on Amazon Lily on Prime. And I had that conversation a month ago when I was doing my podcast with a friend and I was having that, con and I'm having that conversation all the time with women that I talk to. So maybe if you're a big streamer that streams every day, you're not in a lot of women's spaces to see what women are discussing or stuff like that. I'm sorry if I'm assuming stuff. I'm sure you're looking for discourse around consent. Uh, so I apologize that I'm completely mischaracterizing you, right? The most common complaint right? about women on the internet are that they are part of like, oh, let me, let me finish. Like, Katie, finish your point. Okay, so when I came here, I told you, I am extremely interested in having a conversation about the nuance of uh, a, a sexual engagement that is consensual and somebody changes their mind or maybe you're triggered in that moment. I love talking about that. That's something that I struggle with. So I enjoy hearing other women's perspective. I also talk about men with about that with men because it's important to talk about that. What my problem is, is that I seem to be able to understand the conversation that you want to have but you seem to, for a lot of reasons at this point, because you dug yourself so, so far up this thing, that you don't seem to understand what, what we are saying. We're not disagreeing with you that we can talk about the nuance of sex. We're saying when you want to talk about the nuance, on, uh, the nuance of sex and like the, the, burden, the responsibility or the, the agency that women can have, but you're doing it in the context 
of stealthing, for example, which we don't need to call it assault, but we all agree that it's a shitty thing that is done to a person. When you say you let a guy stealth you, you fundamentally don't understand what violating consent is. And I get that it's not violent rape in the way that you understood rape to be 20 years ago. And I already told you, rape is too broad. We need more words. So I'm coming forward to you on that. I agree with you. I made all the points that you made with Erudite the other day with other people, but I can't do that when we're discussing what a woman should do when she's being perpetrated against. That's not the same as the consensual sexual encounter that you're talking about. And you keep talking about casual sex, and then we talk about sexual engagement. And, and you say, let's talk about what happens in relationships. We always said, you know that in consensual sex, that's not wh wh where most sexual assaults happen. That's not where most stealth happen stealthing happens. So why keep bringing up this advice that you know has no relevance to anything that we're talking about, to anything that you want to talk about? Steven? I, I, I don't even know what the point of that whole ramble was. I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to respond to. <laughs> I, I think Sorry. she's upset at the word let, right? I think, I think what needs to happen is at the beginning of every single thing related to consent, you've got to say like 15 lines of like, don't rape, rapists are bad. A person that rapes is sole responsibility you know, for the rape. Maybe you didn't have to do that if fault. people like I you didn't talk like the, the way that you no, do. No, I think the problem is people like me want to have mature conversations about consent, but your brain only goes as far as saying, don't rape guys, LOL. You and then think after that, you what you from, what, if from you there, tweeted were mature conversations, then you're delusional. Okay. Nobody How thought you were mature. Not a single person. Go. Not even one. What Go about ahead. my tier four subs? Okay. All right. Stop sure it. Your, your son did. Not, uh, knock it off. Spectre. Right. So um, I think that one of the reasons that people may want some kind of qualification around talking about these kind of things is due to the fact that, yes, women do feel like they have been told their whole lives how to avoid these situations. They are told to wear headphones. They are told, yell fire instead of rape. I know that you've all heard this because that will more likely raise concern people nearby, just statistically speaking. Um, like, that's why they get upset about this kind of advice. I don't want to talk about that, though, because what we're getting like bogged down on here is there's a difference between saying, fine, it's good advice to say, maybe you don't have casual sex anymore if you keep on having negative experience with casual sex. We'll just reduce it to that, right? But where is it reasonable to draw an expectation in a line to actually have that be an expectation and not just advice, right? If we tell women, you have to stay home and be celibate, that reduces all rape, right? Is that a reasonable expectation for us to like set? And is that reasonable advice for us to give? It's what result? we do with children. Yes, if you were a child of seven or eight years old, we say, don't have casual sex because you're not old enough, you're not mature enough, you can't engage with that in a responsible way. If you're somebody that's 18 or 20 or 25 and you feel like you can't assert a boundary, then yeah, like a child, you should be told, hey, get them to. don't have casual right. sex. What? Do you think that should be established? Yeah, same thing with men. Do you want to rape people or pressure people to do no. drugs or whatever? No, 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 no. I, I want to give Spectre home. Spectre's been waiting. I really want him to be oh, able to have this right, back okay. and forth. Please, Spectre. So... Our boundary is not generally established before sex and then negotiated, like, as things continue, right? Not generally, yeah. Y yeah, you'd agree that's how it goes? That they're not usually established beforehand, yes. Okay. But when a man is wearing a condom at the beginning of sex, the expectation is that he'd probably be wearing it till the end of sex. Should be, yeah. That should be the expectation, yeah. Okay, so if he removes the condom, mm -hmm. right? And the woman is afraid of how he will respond to her saying, put it back on. He's already violated the boundary. He's already demonstrated uh -huh. that he has no respect. That woman for her shouldn't be having agency. Sex. Yes. You don't understand why somebody could be a little bit like frightened about calling that out, given that he's already demonstrated a disrespect for her agency. Yeah, I understand and, like, why you know, an eight year old could be intimidated by sexual activity. If seeing a guy take a condom off scares you so much that you can't verbalize anything, then rather than send somebody out to be raped, which is what's going to happen, because there's things that are way more difficult than stealthing. Rather than sending somebody out into the world like that, you probably say, like, hey, if you're not comfortable asserting a boundary here, either don't have casual sex, work on your self-esteem or something, or wait for, like, a committed relationship with somebody that you feel like you can trust or something. Absolutely. Why, why would a committed relationship be any better for somebody who has a problem Because hopefully boundaries. there's more trust in that relationship and you feel more comfortable bringing up a concern than you would with like a Do you think stranger. that it's easily for somebody that you trust to violate your boundaries? If than it's not, someone... if it's not, then don't have sex in a relationship yet either. Yeah. Let's okay, flip this so on the other side. Hold on. on Let's flip this on the other side. If a woman says, I don't really think I could ever verbalize 
um, any type of opposition to a guy taking a condom off in a casual sexual circumstance, should I still go out and have casual sex with guys I made off Tinder? What do you think the answer to that should be? Uh, if you ask me... No, make Spectre answer. Don't answer for him to try to bail people out of tough questions when there's an obvious contradiction of what they're saying. I, I would say that if somebody asked me for that advice, that I would give them that advice, yes. But the issue is, is no, that, well, like... Well, then we agree. Then you agree. If they can't handle it, then don't go and pursue those interactions where you're always going to get raped if the guy decides that he wants to push or break a boundary. You're always going to get raped in any situation if the no, guy decides not. they're going to break no, the not. boundary. Why are you a rape creator? That's, you're not but, always but, going but, to get raped. There are times but, where you can verbally assert a boundary to change the course of your destiny. You can have some agency over your life. You're not a victim. Sir, Stop treating all women like... Because you, you do like a so, 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 Please, so, fuck. Holy shit. Can you please repeat the question one more time? <laughs> um, portal A or Portal B? Wait, what is... You want me to repeat my the question to you? The Tinder date one. The if Tinder date. a woman date. says, I don't feel like I could ever verbally reinforce a boundary... If a guy is stealthing me, do you think I should still go on Tinder and try to find guys to hook up with? Um, if you're a woman that's not able to enforce, what do you mean enforce a boundary? What if you're a woman who's been like raped due to the fact that you said, hey, I would like you to put that condom back on. He said no and kept on fucking you. Like, is the fact that you don't want to like physically get him off of you because you're afraid of physical violence at that point? Does that no, make you on, like able to push saying, on, like, I'm saying if you're not even comfortable saying something when you see a guy doing it, a girl says, if I saw a guy who was like, who took the condom off, I don't even think I could open my mouth. I don't, I don't, I haven't met a woman who's told me that, but yeah, I'd probably say that they should not go on Tinder. Um, but, Thank but, you, then we agree. We fully agree okay, 100%. We're on the same team. Yeah. Welcome to Team Pro Rape. Welcome, Spectre. You're on the woman-hating misogyny team. Jesus. But do we... Fact to respond. No, that's your point. Do we not agree that, like, if advice is reasonable, it would probably be followed, and that this advice has been given, like I've said, to women since they were in their, like, formative years? It, it doesn't seem to be the case, or based on all the outcry I saw on Twitter, it seems to be really common that people saying, well, women might freeze up and, and have a... They're not able to say something, they're not able to do something or whatever. But, but it seems like people aren't willing to say, well, if that is your default response, then maybe you should wait a little bit to engage in casual sex um, because it seems like you aren't able to handle those situations in a way where if somebody's trying to take advantage of you, you can't stop them. Um, Spectre, are you, did you finish your... Uh, you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, Stabby? Five uh, seconds. Can I ask... Oh, Jesse, you said can ten... I ask... I oh, said, are you good in 10 seconds? Or? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just like, you know. Okay, all right. Then we'll go to Stabby, and then we'll go to Cherry. Um, and Katie wants to jump in? Fine. Okay, so Destiny, I have a question for you. Why, when mm -hmm. you've been mentioning the men versus the women and also rapists, you've said decide for the men and the rapists, and you've said let for the women? Is there a specific reason you've used that specific terminology? You're the one who said words mean things, and you've also been the one saying, I want a mature conversation and been kind of immature. So... Can you nail down what the words let and why that would be gendered for you and what the words decide would mean and why that's also gendered? Thank what, you. Decide or let in what context? As in You've like let decide. a man? No, you haven't said let a man once. You've said um, men decide, 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 and you've used the word decide for men this whole time and you've used the word let for women. Is there a specific psychology behind that? Like what are you doing with yeah, that? Because what I'm telling you is that when you're saying a woman could be expected to freeze up and have a response when a guy's trying to push on something. What you're essentially saying is that the man is getting to decide in that circumstance 100% if the woman is going to get raped or not. Because apparently Wait. the woman has no agency or ability to intervene. You're saying that the man gets 100% of the decision. That's where the but, infantilization argument comes from. Right. But the but the man, again, something that you, you're insisting we say this, stay on this one little topic about casual sex. But again, a man is going to decide to rape. A woman who is a rapist is going to decide to rape. And they've already decided. Um, and it's not about casual sex. It's not about any of those things. It's it's that they're going to offend. And they're going to use your arguments as a this, shield this is not, uh, later This is not how rape but happens. People don't go out and decide to rape. Especially when we talk about things like stealthing. A lot of this is done in the moment where most rapes happen. I don't know if you've, if you've just never had a casual sexual relationship before. I can explain for people that have no experience. I see a lot of people have these conversations who don't have experience, okay? If you talk to women that have experience or men that do, the way that it typically goes is the guy is chasing, 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 and the woman is 
uh, agreeing to varying levels based on her level of comfort, but because of how society is organized, because of how men are, a man will push and push and push and push, sometimes up to the point of a boundary, sometimes past a boundary, because that's what guys for historically have been trained to do, or biologic wired to do, whatever you want to say, that's how men typically approach sex right now, in kind of a rapey manner. Right? I want to bring her back to my place. I want to get her drunk. I want to do these things so that she can't say no that she wants, right? The thing is, is that if we say that a man is going to act like that, then there's only one thing that stops him from doing it. And at that point, it's probably not going to be him remembering a commercial that he saw on PBS saying, don't rape. It's going to be a woman saying, hey, this is the boundary for me. We're not doing this. You're not, put the condom back on or I'm leaving. I told my friend that I was going to call her by 10 o'clock. I'm out of here if you're not going to stop. Like, this is where the line stops right now. If you're telling me that a woman can't say that, then you've given all of the agency to the man. And you're under the mistaken assumption that a man has decided prior to this, I'm gonna rape somebody tonight. I'm gonna go and stealth them. That's not how their mind works. The mind is, I'm gonna go as far as I can with this woman. And hopefully she doesn't say no and I'll see how far I can push it. But if a woman pushes back and say, hey, you know what? This is where we stop. Then most of the time, that is where that situation stops. Wouldn't that be cause for you to say that men are too immature to have any kind of sex, casual or otherwise? That entire screed would say that men should not be asking for or wanting sex, wouldn't it? I was just gonna say that. And I've already answered that question like six times. It's like you guys have, have, have gotten the same dunks, I guess, in your own talking groups. Great, let's get the tweet out then. Go ahead. Can I try to rephrase? Oh, one thing I've just... ever said, first of all, I'm almost positive. I've tweeted and said, had videos to this effect that if you're a guy and you lean on a woman over and over and over and over again, and that's your, I've talked about consent and how to approach women and all this shit like a million times on my stream. And I've said that if this is your way to approach sex, it is toxic as fuck. Because not only are you fucking yourself by making it so that women never want to be around you because they feel unsafe around you and the entire culture makes women feel unsafe around men, but you're also kind of being a rapist and you're ruining that particular experience for the woman too. I've said this a million fucking times. The problem is that your brain, when you hear somebody give even an ounce, even a modicum of criticism to the woman's side, you're like, wow, that guy must be pro-rape. That guy must love it when men rape women. If that guy's not saying, man, you shouldn't rape on every single one of his fucking tweets, he must love it when men rape women. Oh my God, this is horrible. Okay. Can All I right. try to rape One second. Uh, we'll Just do, please. Uh, no, guys, Cherry, uh, Katie, uh, Spectre. Uh, you can go to Katie. Okay. Katie, Spectre. Um, so... I, I just listened to what you said, and you talked about how men, I, either because they were socialized or because biologically, or it doesn't matter, currently men generally exist in the world in X way. They have a certain sexual behavior. Um, and that pattern, you said, I called it out. It's toxic. It's rapey. It's bad. And then when we look about the patterns for women, uh, let's say that I concede the point that a lot of women are incapable of ever pushing back when their boundaries are being crossed or whatever, which I don't. But let's say I concede to that because that's like the woman you have in your head. So when a woman like that is um, incapable of doing the thing that you should you think she should do, then you say then don't have casual sex. But with the guy, you just said, yeah, it's toxic. It's bad. Don't do that. And that's not quite the same prescription. So what me and Stabby are saying, if a guy um, is incapable of not being rapey and toxic, they shouldn't engage in sex, casual or otherwise, because they don't seem to have the emotional maturity to handle sex properly. What and that's the point my, we're yeah, making. Katie, what do you think my response would be to that if you've missed all of it so far? I I think, honestly, your responses don't make a lot of sense to me. I'm going to be honest. I can tell. So my response would be, yeah, if you're I'm that really kind done. of guy, if you're that kind of guy, uh, you probably shouldn't be having casual sex either because the proclivity for you to be engaging in really rapey behavior is pretty fucking high. But I've already said, said this like seven times but now. But you said guys are like that. Like you generalize to guys behave isn't, this way. Katie, isn't that setting up realistic like expectations when women go out in the world? by just like yeah. letting them understand yes. how, how things are. It's not so much say, emboldening the way that it is. It's just like, this is just also, how it is. And we can okay. also say okay. the okay. same exact thing. Like, for go ahead. Katie, do you want to respond? Yes, I, I did my best not to have a, a snarky, sarcastic comment. So I'm going to answer like, a, you, like you can genuinely. get snarky with me. It's OK. <laughs> um, no, I want to try to be more emotional and mature than that. Um, I think that I have an issue with, I, I'm fine accepting that we'll, 
women are probably like that the rape statistics or the sexual assault statistics. I think it's very um, demoralizing and like a bit wrong to say, well, it seems that men are incapable of not raping women. So we just got to accept that men will men will rape, not all men, hashtag, just some men sometimes. Um, and women just going to have to deal, I guess, and find better ways to not get raped. So this type of conversation is awful. why I wish that people that had far left social views would just leave the sex talks to people that have actual real world experience or have some way to contribute to the conversation that is not so idealistically brain dead that it's actually harmful to people that are out in the world engaging in sexual relationships. It's I great that in your head, and let me finish, yeah, hold yeah, on, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. let Steven, me fucking finish, Steven. Jesus fucking Christ, you're violating my boundary right now. See how I verbally affirm that? Okay. See, so I can break it and you can't assert yourself see, against what, Are you serious? Steven. Assert I'm, yourself. I'm asserting it, I am asserting myself, okay? Good boy. <laughs> I, I, I'll be the boundary. You guys can uh, okay, uh, push and break so, me all you if, want. Go ahead. There is two. There are ways that people should act in the world, and sometimes it feels like we want to give advice for our utopia. In a perfect world, a girl should be able to go out to a bar, dressed in the sluttiest outfit she wants, get wasted with an absolute fucking stranger, and expect to get an Uber ride home and a guy tucking her into her fucking couch and leaving her a glass of water and an ibuprofen and then leaving the house. But that's not the world that we live in, but it feels like that's the advice that people give for. And that's just not how it is. The reality is, is there's a lot of creepy, rapey fucking guys out there. There's a reason why like fucking 60 to 90% of women, depending on what stat you take, have had a sexual assault experience. So this statement of like, well, men shouldn't do this, men shouldn't do that. I don't give a fuck what men should do. People shouldn't drink and drive. But when it's 2 a.m. on fucking New Year's Eve, you better believe that I'm driving like the most careful motherfucker in the world. And it's not because I think everybody on the road has a responsibility to be a nice person and not drink and drive. The reality is that the men are going to act a certain way. We have to empower women to make decisions so that they are not at the, at the mercy of a guy who's deciding that he's going to violate and push a boundary because he knows that that woman is too demure, too quiet, or lacking too much confidence to push back on it okay Spe can somebody tell me why he says we can't use oh, oh, Spectre, Spectre, specter's turn right so destiny i agreed with you like if i was asked for advice i would do all these prescriptions that you're giving to somebody who was trying to solicit that advice from me the issue here and the reason that it comes across as victim blaming is no one was asking for yours or mind waves advice in this situation right they were. like they i'm were. not just going to huh they who were when you post something on a social media platform, you're opening up for everybody to comment. That's the point of a social media platform. Wait, wait were they asking for advice or were they just describing a situation and then saying men do Why better? It felt like they were giving like a prescription. It's appropriate for you to describe a personal event like on a social media. If you're doing that, it's because you're opening it up to feedback from other people. If you didn't want to share it publicly, then you post it in a private group or on your Facebook or on a locked Twitter where only your followers. Okay, consume. and then I can respond to that public feedback publicly and tell you yeah. that it has zero utility, right? It's if just useless. Well, that's the conversation we're having now, right? Okay, I don't, I don't feel like people who have just went through an assault are going to be receptive to being told how to change their behavior if it's in a way that they don't want to. Yeah. When Maybe I was that's assaulted, a problem. my response was to like basically and fall into like a deep depression and like bottle down. Exactly. They the don't problem, want to. Though. And I guess what? <laughs> what do you think that you fix alcoholism by telling them to put the bottle down? Do you think that you fix it by 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 accommodating their behavior over and over again and tell them well there's nothing you can do? No, about it's it? much more complicated than that, but it's definitely not like, hey buddy, uh, you know, that stuff can be pretty fucking addictive. Do you know what step one is and, of quitting um, alcohol? The most important part is putting down the bottle. In this case, yeah, the it's admitting is that you have a sex. problem, but I don't know if you ever tried to try and tell an alcoholic well, they have, you have a problem. problem is it's you're really fucking yourself. difficult. It's really fucking difficult. Sounds like okay? victim blaming. The alcoholic right here. I'm, I'm going to be totally No, what I'm here. saying is that this is probably advice that would be well received if actually sought after by the individual first. If you are just throwing this at random people who are talking about traumatic experiences on the internet. Okay, if that's the case, <laughs> then do you think that it's helpful to tell rapists not to rape? Um... This, all of this is pointless virtue signaling, right? Maybe yes. we should have the hard conversations then about, well, how are there ways that we can avoid sexual assault? How can we empower women to have more agency who are usually at a disadvantage in sexual encounters, right? Rather than just saying men shouldn't rape over and over again, because clearly that doesn't fucking work for everybody. Wait, who here is just saying that men shouldn't rape and is, that's been their only, like, advice? Like... Because it seems to? like when you give even any amount of advice, I'm like, hey, like, abstain from these things if you can't keep yourself from getting hurt on them. People freak the fuck out. I'm pretty sure that's half of the of the criticism here is just tell men not to rape. 
right? Tell men no. not to sell. That is no. exactly what was said. Maybe not from you, Spectre, but that has been said. Okay. When? Then we're going to go to Stabby, and then we're going to go to Katie. When? Are you guys what? saying that you didn't tell Destiny that he has to tell men not to rape? No, we um, told Destiny no, that... I that is ahead, what you Spectre. said earlier. Come on. Step. No, no. I'll say it. Go ahead, Spectre, because you were in the middle of something. Go. <laughs> oh, man. Just, she threw the football okay. to you, and you knew it was a fucked up question. I, I, you knew you no, said I, it. <laughs> no, when did I say it earlier? Seriously, go for it. When did I say the earlier, just you not to rape. when you're having these conversations, the three of you have basically been saying that you should be telling the man's side to like, hey, stop raping or give advice on the men's side to change men's behavior. How, you're going to pretend that you didn't say that? that this isn't... Give advice. We said give no, advice. I think, that, advice. I, think that most, I think that most men are actually confused on what like consent is supposed to be and that it is a boundary that's I supposed agree. to be continually yeah. negotiated like during sex and that I that's agree. the conversation that we probably need to have, not just simply do not rape, right? Okay, However, I don't I like think that... Stabby is nodding and now she's nodding along when you say that, which is great that she already says it now. But earlier when I said rape is complicated, the way it happens in sexual relationships is complicated. She was she now she's making that face, even though I'm restating what Spectre said. No, it's like your brain no, no, shuts no, no. off when I open my mouth. Oh rape my and rape within the context of a sexual relationship is really complicated. People rape without even fucking realizing it because they don't understand like the boundaries, the consent, the non-consent. They don't even understand it. Well, That's okay. essentially what Spectre just said. But when it comes Harvey to the Weinstein. Mind, that's the same as saying Harvey Weinstein made an oopsie and fell in. Oh no, he didn't know his intent was fine and letting him back out of fucking Nobody, prison. You're, you're, but but you're, why do why do you do that? Why, why do you do stuff on Twitter like making it analogous to sure. like reckless driving, right? And being around other reckless drivers instead of trying to have because that fucking being conversation. Being around reckless driving is the perfect comparison because there are no, two ways not. that we can, it absolutely is, and I get into these arguments all the time, okay? When I'm out driving, okay? When I'm driving on the road, I don't give a fuck what the fucking law is or what who has the right of way or who is supposed to be doing what. What I care about is what are the driving behaviors that I can enact to optimize my chance of survival. There are times where when I'm going through an intersection, I look both ways, even if the light is green. Or if some Somebody's merging into me and I've got the right of way, but they look like they're fucking in a bigger car than me, really aggressive. I'll fucking yield to them because fuck it, right? Now, just because somebody gets into an accident with me on the interstate and they were drunk, that doesn't make it my fault. And But to say that I could have taken steps to minimize my risk of another person crashing into me, that's not victim blaming. It's just ascribing you a higher level of agency. We can talk about defensive driving, but when we talk about defensive sexual behaviors, all of a sudden it becomes victim blaming, which is a toxic conversation to have because you're giving all of the agency and power to the man to decide how far the rape is going to go that particular I already night. said that that advice is fine to give when it is solicited, but when you give it as your only thing that you want to talk about for a week on a public platform in response to someone who was not soliciting advice. It's not right? just because you make a post. I don't think I ever even tweeted at her. So we got it. Mean, this is a general conversation. We got to move on from this point. Uh, let's go to uh, Stabby and then Katie. Okay. When, when you're going to talk like that about, about this is analogous to um, driving, you have to understand that when it comes to driving, because insurance is, is involved, the police actually show up. The police actually say, actually, it was nothing you could have done. You were d driving properly. These skid marks prove that this person slammed into you and all of this went to shit. And there is some kind of an arbiter in between the two. And we still have the same laws that are built up around these two things. Um, we still have a legal system that's supposed to be enforcing them. But we have so much confusion, confusion surrounding this and this whole little, what I just now said, the oopsie, I guess I fell into her bullshit. You... You are allowed to create the shield for people who accidentally, I guess, managed to rape a person. I have no idea where you came up with this. Okay, you're end up raping a person yeah. and in an accidental rape. That's impossible. I can explain it for it's not impossible. You don't it's understand you the believe, dynamic. Wait, wait, wait. You yeah. believe in accidental rape? Absolutely. I do too. I know Absolutely. what he's talking about. What do you mean? It's not about. even like, what do you mean? There are so many different ways, right? You might be having there. I, I actually, I can't even believe so get the I'm saying that. Like, I, I, I I'm not even going to give examples involved. because if you don't understand so, this, you're so far behind the conversation. That, I don't even know what it is. That's the issue. Look, we're having different also, conversations. Oh wait, also yeah. hold on. Your your car example was absolutely perfect because you have the same misunderstanding there that you do in the sexual circumstance. Just because you are not at fault for an accident 
does not mean that there aren't steps you could have taken to prevent the accident. So you're going to have to tell me why you're going to have to tell me why you're sitting there saying that this is all accidental with this. And you're going to use you brought up cars, not me. You're going to use this example with with a car accident when the police are actually going to be a part of that. When yeah. the police are actually going to say who was at fault, yes. but we don't actually have that right now today legally. We don't have that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times it doesn't work for 20, it's, 30, 40 it's years. Harder. It's harder to do it in a sexual circumstance because there are no witnesses. You have two people and usually some level of consent has happened. So it's hard to prove that criminal charge beyond a criminal, uh, beyond a, a reasonable doubt. Insurance doesn't have to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt because there aren't usually criminal charges filed related to this. It's a different thing. Okay. Um, uh, Katie, thing. Katie, give it a try. Um, I get, I understand that we're worried about accidental rapes. Um, when, when he says accidental rape, he means because the advice that men are getting is just don't rape. And when you ask most men, they can't even come to like a clear definition of what rape is kind of like how the three of us, I see stealthing as a huge consent violation. I see it as rape as sexual assault on a definition level, not on a moral level. Destiny doesn't agree with us. So for him, it's just a guy taking off his, ca his condom to push boundaries, boys be boys, or whatever. He's said, just no, boys no, no, be boys. Don't no, have, knock it don't off. Don't let him misquote Start, me. Uh, That's bullshit. Oh, exactly. Then you can respond later on. Katie, finish. I take it back. I, he never said boys be boys. He would never say such Thank a you. thing. Okay. Um, Thank you for asserting your agency. Um, so when this guy now tries to push boundaries, because some guys are like that, the rapey toxic ones, they will accidentally rape you because if you don't assert yourself in that moment, they'll just continue doing it. And the, the divide is that we understand that the, the pre-established boundary was condom. And when they remove the condom, that is a breach of the boundary. And for Destiny, hey, the guy's just trying it out. He doesn't know that you don't want to take off the... I mean, he's just trying it. If you could just have more agency and say it. And when you don't say it, you're making the guy a rapist. Because now they raped you. And maybe they wouldn't have if you had said something. And I actually understand that a lot of my sexual experiences were like that it's why i don't call them rape because i'm not willing to label the men that i've been with in that way i understand that i didn't inform them of what was going on because i didn't want to ruin their fun for example if we want to talk about socialization another reason why women don't assert their agency is because they were socialized to not do that so if we want to talk about how guys are socialized to push 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 uh, women are socialized to please, please, please. And I don't think anyone can say that that's not like that in the bedroom. So, okay. So when we talk about rape and sexual assault, when I say, if a guy decides to rape you, they're just going to do that. I mean, when a guy takes off his condom, after you agreed that he's going to wear a condom, that's them deciding to rape you. And Destiny does not agree with that definition because he thinks that's just pushing boundaries. So for him, if you don't say anything, then you make the guy a rapist. Because if you had said something, he would have put his condom back or he would have stopped having sex. And then you wouldn't be raped and the guy wouldn't be a rapist. And that's the issue, right? Okay. So when we are talking about, I'm sorry, it's just very quick. So when we're talking, uh, when I'm talking about this, when, when we keep telling you we need to educate men, the conversation needs to be about men is because we shouldn't tell men don't rape. Men don't understand what rape is. This panel can't decide what rape is. We need more targeted approaches. And my issue is, is that you're focusing on the women's agency because you see rape and the current crime statistics of rape as a fact of the world that women and other sexual assault victims just have to live by. And I think if we focus the conversation more on the perpetrators, I can't make rape go away, but it will go down significantly more because we have spent decades training women to not get raped. They still get raped. And that has nothing to do with casual sex. Stephen, please. Okay. I agree with like 94.7% of what you said. Okay. You, I'm, I'm flattered 
Okay, I am fl and flabbergasted. All right, thank you. The only things that I would awesome. nitpick there are that one, a woman not enforcing a boundary against a man doesn't make her deciding that he's going to be a rapist. If a guy is pushing a boundary and he goes too far, that's his decision. And he is the only one that can make that decision to be a rapist, okay? 100%. However, the only thing I'm saying is that as you seem to understand, you said this and you, we're really good at this, is that women culturally are taught to kind of please, to not say much, to not speak up, and men are taught to pursue, 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 pursue. So there can be these times where men are pushing, 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 and we can say that pushing a boundary eventually becomes rape. I mean, if you push boundaries enough, you're sexually assaulting to raping somebody. There is a spectrum there, obviously, of course. And that if, if, the, if the continued social programming of women is to not say anything, there are circumstances where a man goes from pushing a boundary to sexual assault to rape where it would have stopped earlier if a woman would have just said like, hey, this is not gonna happen. That's all I'm saying. That if, when the reason why guys stealth is because they don't want the confrontation. If a, if a, if a guy wanted to fuck a woman without a condom, he would just throw her on the bed and fuck her without a condom. But a guy trying to do it stealthing is trying to do it because he doesn't want the confrontation. He's trying, she doesn't notice, he's just taking it off because he doesn't want her to fucking say anything and then he just wants to sneak it in and then by the time they're fucking, she's probably not gonna say no, right? It's always push, 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 right? But if a girl notices or figures out, it's like, hey, stop, that confrontation is enough to stop a lot of people because like you said, men don't ever see themselves as rapists. Very, very, very fear, very very few men are like, I'm gonna rape somebody. Usually it's just like, if I wanna have the best time possible, I have to push as much as possible. And as long as she doesn't explicitly say no, it's not rape. Because for a long time, that was the training. If the woman doesn't say no, then it's not rape. And we don't really have conversations around like enthusiastic consent or all the other parts that go into sex. It's just as long as she doesn't say no, we're fine. So if women are a little bit more comfortable saying no, there are some rapes that do happen that maybe wouldn't happen. That's all I'm saying. Katie? So I, why is it Katie, that Katie? I, I agree with you for the most part. I just think um, when you're talking about stealthing, for example, um, when you're saying if a guy just wanted to have you without a condom, they'll just throw you on a bed and like regular rape you, I guess. But you don't consider stealthing to to be like the same. It's just like them avoiding the conflict. But for most people, I think, uh, that are up with the definition, He's raping you either way. It's just one is like violent rape and the other one is just the other type of rape that you think is less harmful. Yeah, the only um, reason why I'm drawing a distinction with these two is because what I'm saying is that like one of these is very easy to stop and the other one is probably almost impossible to stop. If a guy is going to violently rape you, you're in a circumstance where you either have to fight, maybe to the death, or get raped, or like, that's, you're fucked. It's a really bad situation. But if you're in a situation where a guy's like method of like raping you is to either get you to drink too much or to stealth you to cut him off, that's a situation where the woman has a lot of agency. She can stop that event from happening. And we should encourage people to exert agency where they can. I think that most women understand, and maybe I saw that as you infantilizing women and it's actually just, I, I don't know. All the women that I know uh, understand that they should probably say something if they're uncomfortable. Like that's not like novel advice. I, I don't think women are telling other women or anyone te is telling women, be quiet, don't say when you're uncomfortable. Like when I, I sex with guys right now, all they talk about is like, just tell me if you're comfortable. If you say no right away, I'll stop. And for me, for example, that's an issue because sometimes I'll get uncomfortable and I wouldn't be able to stop. Right. Okay, and and I tell them that. And that's, I tell if that them, is the case in your circles. That's great. But the overwhelming amount of stuff that I saw is when somebody's being stealthed, they're being raped. You can't expect a woman to speak up then. She's having a trauma response. Freezing up is the most common thing. That's what I saw overwhelmingly. And those are the okay. conversations I heard. I understand. So I think there's a misinterpretation there. When when people like me are saying you can't expect a woman to speak up there, what they're saying is if there's a situation like stealthing, I'm very much not concerned with the reaction of the woman because she's a victim in this scenario. I'm worried about the perpetrator. That is the person that I want to cuss out and that is the person that I want to target their behavior. Could women do, could some rapes be prevented? Of course, but there's the question of like, at what cost? And also if you understand socializations, which clearly you do, then you're saying basically, every woman that that now exists that lived under the patriarchy can't have sex anymore because we were all socialized to please in bed so i guess only the really strong tough women can do that 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 
Sure. Okay. That doesn't seem like a viable solution considering we're adults and we have agency and there is trauma responses and it's a lot more complex. And we talked about the nuance of sex, right? Sure. I, I, I understand all of this. I'm just saying that like, it seems like in so many other scenarios, the advice will be flipped and people won't get mad at all. So here's an instance. Okay. There's a reason for worse, that. Worse than, worse than, I will say this, worse than rape most of the time would be a woman that is lying about being on birth control. And a guy comes in a woman, she lies about being on birth control, and now the guy is 18 years in for child support, and then a whole other bunch of things in his life. In this circumstance, now everybody's like, okay, yeah, obviously we should be on birth control, but ubiquitously, the advice given is, why would you come in a woman without knowing 100%? How fucking stupid are you? How dumb are you to come in a woman without, and you just believed her when she said she was, that is almost all the time, the advice given. And what not only, not only, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not only is a man held like almost morally responsible for making such a dumb case, he is held legally and financially responsible because even if a woman says in court, I baby trapped that dude, he will still be on the hook for 18 years of child support, depending on his income. So it just seems but like sometimes it like, it like, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to tell you what feminists say. Feminists say that poking a hole in a condom is, and, and getting yourself pregnant, especially in traditional settings, is a way that some younger women will try to salvage a relationship to have the parental enforcement unit of his side and her side force them to get married. We also view that, feminists also view that as stealthing. Um, I'm, on the, I'm on the far left. I don't think that child support should exist at all, actually. Me I believe too. that, okay, yeah, I think child support should be gone. I think that, sh that we should cut our military spending in half. I'm a single mom myself. I think that military spending should be cut in half. And we should be investing in our children. So I'm with you on that on the 18 years thing. I, I'm with you completely. That's part of stealthing destiny. That's why this is so important. Yeah, hold on. I'm, I, that's I don't disagree also with you. stealthing. I understand that's a bad thing, but I'm saying that if a guy were to tweet that out, if you were to go on stream as a woman and you were to say, like, holy shit, a guy stealthed me. Like, it was horrible. It would be a chat full of, like, yes, queen, nothing could have happened. I'm so sorry. This is the worst experience in the world, blah, blah, blah. If I what were to come on stream, because if I were to come on stream and I were to say, I nutted a girl, she said that she was on birth control, she wasn't, she's fucking pregnant, everybody on the internet would be lambasting me for being a fucking idiot that trusted a woman to be on birth control. And they'll and I'm be saying wrong. That, that, that's that fine is. that they would be wrong, but you wouldn't be saying shit about it. None of you would be. But, I know you would. I don't believe you're saying it. But we already, but we already, so there's what are you talking about? What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that, what I'm here, saying, I, no, there are no different dynamics. The, the, yes, the, there are. And you already pointed them out yourself. Yes. I can, what, I can what show I'm, you. What I'm saying is that there is a horrible wrong that's coming out. What I'm saying is that like when you, when it seems like we're incapable sometimes of giving advice on one end without people instantly assuming that you're saying the worst possible thing. So if somebody, if something happens where a girl's like, I was still three times and another time a guy violently raped me. And like the obvious advice there is, hey, if this is happening so many times, you should not have casual sex. You've got to stop. It, in not. any other self-destructive behavior, that would be, if you were like, I parked my car in a neighborhood seven times and I got broken into over and over again. If I went driving, I got into six different accidents over and How over again. Every, she every was single, having casual sex si when that happened. Like that advice doesn't follow in okay. any single way. If, 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 if it happened, if it happened so in a relationship, then she, should stop, then she should stop having relationship sex as if, well. Whatever. Well, like, she she was casual on Twitter. Twitter. It was casual sex and she talked about continuing to have more casual sex this weekend, by the way. Okay. But oh, thousands of women have come forward with completely, wait, the reason that trauma wait, so dumping- didn't take the advice? <laughs> It's like if you tell heroin, what I just stop shooting heroin, they just cut it out. Yeah, I know. I'm just pointing out whoa, 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 what, okay. it, what it is. Multiple things here but happening Shuri, here. Shuri, go ahead. Thousands of women came forward throughout the rest of this fallout. And the reason trauma dumping even became a part of this, you know, three days later, is because all of these women were coming forward saying that that's not how theirs happened with casual sex. And people just kept doubling down and then started escalating all the way to sexual assault and then started making so many made pro-rape arguments and and destiny i'm really sorry that people will say oh my god you're an idiot or the men will go oh 18 years of child support i think that's disgusting it's one of the reasons i'm against these things and why i think we need to change the conversation but destiny this is our feelings and when you're talking about people saying oh if i say this the women will say yes queen well, three women might say, yes, queen, share your trauma, et cetera. But I also get like 20 something DMs and people threatening to chop me into pieces or murder me. So, I, I mean, it's not it's not societal acceptance. Like Wait, what? You're saying. I just have one question for Destiny. 
if one of your friends came to you and said, dude, this girl lied to me. She said she was on birth control. I came inside of her. I'm about to have to pay child support for 18 fucking years. Would your response to him be like, well, dude, I guess you should just uh, not have unprotected sex anymore if you're not able to like gauge whether or not a woman is being honest with you? No. My advice would be okay. don't nut in a woman that has less money than you. It's okay to knock somebody up if they're rich, all right? You benefit there. All right. Um, also, just, you said you didn't interact with this girl on Twitter, and yet now you're knowing the amount of times that she's been sexually assaulted. And I like have a picture of you quote tweeting her here. Like, do you not agree that she's probably not going to be receptive to your advice? Neither did she solicit it. I'm not giving Maybe advice. I don't give a fuck. She sounds like a loser. I'm not giving advice to this person. It's just a broader conversation about like sexual behavior. And what do you think that it accomplishes is what I guess we're getting at. If not, what does any, come what is any conversations on the Internet accomplish? I don't know. Hopefully somebody listens or somebody's thinking like, hey, you know, I heard in a desk stream once that if I'm a woman, if I verbally assert a boundary, maybe a guy will not push a boundary. And maybe that person will listen to that. And maybe when they have casual sex, maybe they'll do it. Or maybe there's a guy listening and they're like, wow, looking at all of this creation on, on Twitter, a lot of women are uncomfortable even fucking verbalizing a boundary. Maybe they'll be a little bit more sensitive to a woman who's not exactly saying no, but doesn't seem totally comfortable. I don't know. Maybe on both sides it'll help or okay. who knows Inter maybe rapers will hear my argument and they'll say destiny loves rapers and they'll go who i get this at the end of the day i'll have to run some polls i'll find out how many people raped and how many people didn't rape and how many people avoided it got raped and then i'll add them all together and see what happened i mean i don't think that anyone is going to take unsolicited advice from a stranger on the internet that they consider to be offensive and i think i've, I've, I've tried to lay out to you why it comes across to them as victim blaming okay like, because it, you are implicitly stating, whether it's true or not, that there's something that they could have done to prevent the action. You've already conceded that if women are, are being socialized to be non-confrontational and men are being socialized to push for as much as they can get, it is still the man's responsibility to not cross the boundary and not do the sexual assault, right? Is all advice for people moving answer. forward going back to Sorry. victim blaming? Well, just, just a quick thing. It's like... People can have different levels of responsibility and agency for something, but not be at fault for it, right? Like, you can take more responsibility when driving to avoid a drunk driver. That doesn't mean it's your fault if a drunk driver hits you. Saying that you can have more responsibility in a yeah. sexual relationship, but it's not your fault if somebody rapes you. There are just, there are varying levels of responsibility we can have or agency that we can exert to avoid a situation. Okay. But if your only response is to say that this individual should not be engaging in any kind of casual sex, right? And you're already accepting that the individual isn't going to take that advice. Why well, because we, if, a guy, if a guy tweet, if it. a guy tweeted out and he was like, "I just stealth a bitch," and I realized that if I do this um, in the middle of fucking, they don't even say anything, and then I pull out and I saw that being quote tweeted, or or if or if Mind Wave or if Pixie quote tweets that person, and Pixie's like, "If you're a guy and you're stealthing people over and over again and you feel good about it, you probably shouldn't be fucking women." I would probably quote tweet Pixie there and say, "Yeah, that's true." But the advice wasn't coming, or the problem wasn't coming from the male side or the raper side here. It was coming from the female side or the raping do side. You, do you think it's interesting that you literally had to misrepresent what the actual sit? Not you, sorry, mind waves did because you got it like mind waves. Well, no, no, he represented it accurately. Then she came out and clarified so, later on, but I, it was way after the discourse had taken off. So, no, so okay, when yeah, she so clarified, I, I look, 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 the only reason that it was let, misrepresented let, is because mind waves misinterpreted. Oh there was no God. way in so the original tweet for him to infer that. We have a limited amount of time left, and and like just like this back and forth just on. Um, you know, like the TikTok of the, uh, the, the tweets, I, I don't, it's, 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 we can only do so much of that. So Cherry, uh, go ahead. And then Katie and then Stabby. I just really wish we would stop calling, um, advice moving forward, uh, victim blaming. <laughs> Not all advice is victim blaming, just the victim blamey one. <laughs> I you wanted, no, I wanted no, no, but like I've not giving someone advice, advice and how to not blaming. continuously to go. It would be interpreted that sure, way. Sure, 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 sure. No, I'm done. They just want to be upset for fucking ever. Just let them. Um, I okay. just want to talk. Okay, Katie. And then Stappy. Um, so, first of all, can, can we not call the girl a loser and shit? I would appreciate it if we just like. Why? Kept the insults. You could be a sexual assault victim. Don't be a fucking be, loser. Do you, I, it's not would you mind inclusive. not doing it if I'm asking you not to do it? Would that help? Like, just as a courtesy to me, if you don't want to do it yourself. Just because you made such a good faith effort to understand me earlier, Katie, I will rescind all three times I call this person a loser. Yes. Okay. I won't say it. Thank again. you. Um, that's, by the way, that wasn't like a good faith thing to understand you. That's my opinion. Uh, but okay. I um I think that if a guy posted about being stealthed by a woman, so now they're hooked for child support for 18 years, and their response is what you said it was, I think that response is shitty. 
I think people are stupid if that's going to be their reaction. I don't think people should shame a guy for having a girl like do like make a hole in the condom. I get that you you're like you seen pushback on one side and now you're trying to equalize it. Um, it's just that for me, you're like, well, a guy is going to get a shitty advice. So now the girl needs to get a, an equally shitty advice. And me and Stabby are going to say, how about just don't give the shitty advice in the first place? It was wrong when she poked a hole in the condom and it's not his fault and he should not be shamed for it and ridiculed for it and be on the hook for that. And and then we start talking about the tweet and you're talking about clearly there was an issue from the woman's side the there wasn't because we already agreed that the problem was the stealthing, not her behavior, not how she dealt with it. And I understand that you want to discuss agency. And I'm, I'm going to try to say this again. It, it's good to talk about agency. And, and I think we need other advice for men. We need advice that is not don't rape. Men don't know what to do with advice that says don't rape. We need to talk about stealthing. We need to talk about power dynamics. We need to talk about socialization. We need to talk about all of those things. And those are things that men need to be engaged in. Women have been getting advice for a long time. The, all, all the advice amounts to is like minimize your existence because that way you'll be targeted less. And I understand. I understand because I told you a lot of my sexual dynamics are the, these accidental rape situations. So I do think that there's like a hole in this conversation that is not yet addressed. And I would love to have that conversation with you, but that, ca that conversation cannot be had when we all agree that there was a perpetrator that victimized someone. And maybe the victim didn't react in the way that you think is optimal, but that doesn't mean that they lack agency. They, it means that the situations are complex and people are not going to act the best way possible in every scenario that doesn't make it a problem and also when when this girl was talking about being like violently raped the real rape that you're talking about like the old school definition of rape like how does that not later inform your opinion on like her ability to assert herself and stuff like that you laughed when people read that quote and uh, when so I read which quote when when a uh, Hakir guy like he read out that she said no and he kept raping me harder thing. And then you you laughed oh, and said it's this like such a horribly. It's like just the implication to her words there is that a woman should just never say no because it's always just going to get worse. And that is absolutely not true. It's like a um, comical reading of what rape is or how it happens. I yeah. think that's an interesting mm -hmm. interpretation, but I, I, I'll just have to disagree with you. I have another question. You agreed. Wait, but you said earlier that a lot of rapes are just like guys pushing too hard. I, it's I not agree, like but I'm not here to assign meaning. I, I, I think she was just talking about being violently okay. raped by mm -hmm. someone. But here's the issue is I that when you get on- I don't think she was trying a, to hurt you when she said that. I don't matter. think it was a clapback. It, it, when you get on Twitter, when you get on a social media platform and you start giving experiences like these, you're submitting everything thing to into a public conversation if i go on twitter and i say yesterday i was get out walking and guess what happened two black guys were behind me and guess what they robbed me like this is the third time i've gone outside every time i'm walking outside black people behind me they fucking rob me this is bullshit right if somebody were to see a tweet like that and they were to go wait hold on what do you mean by that and i'm like whoa i'm just sharing my experience i like hold on I can talk about my personal experience. I'm traumatized by this. I've had a horrible experience. I can't share this. If things you're saying could be problematic in other ways and you're submitting these into the public space for like interpretation, then yeah, of course. I think it's fair for other people to say, hold on, I don't think the way that you're talking about this is necessarily like the best way. This is why you shouldn't trauma dump in public because trauma is by definition not rational. I Okay, so I'm glad that you said that because I don't give a fuck about trauma dumping, especially like with the context of this woman talking about her sexual uh, like abuse experiences. What I wanted to ask you is, do you think that you, with the platform that you have and who you are and what you mean in this sphere, have a responsibility, any type of responsibility? Are you responsible to anything that you're saying and how that might affect your very devoted audience? Uh, yeah. Okay. Can you? like very roughly outline that for me the level of responsibility you have or the level of responsibility regarding this take um your general level of responsibility 
uh, the things that I say can influence the actions or thoughts of the people in my audience. So I should, whether I want to or not, so I should probably be cognizant of the way that I'm influencing the actions of my audience when I'm speaking publicly. I completely agree with you. And my main criticism of you is that I think there are some ideas that you're interested in exploring or stuff that you're generally upset about. And I think when you chose to open that discussion with that specific thing, um, that was an irresponsible thing to do with your platform and who you are. This is a private person that even if you think did the wrong thing, even if even if everything you said about them was true, like you said, I literally don't give a crap about this person. They're a loser. I don't care that they dropped off the internet. I don't care that a bunch of people now like victim blame them the, the, into being raped. I'm, am I supposed to just not take part in a discussion that I see happening? I didn't know no. about this person. Mindwaves was the one that quote tweeted it and then people started talking about it. Am, am I not no, allowed to I submit think... my- Wait, what do you mean by they're a so, private mm -hmm. person on Twitter? So uh, hold on, let's not get, dis uh, uh, get distracted. Katie, I, I don't please. think that's a thing. Katie, folks. Uh, okay. Um, I think that you're a big enough um, streamer and, and like an individual on this platform that you can generate any conversation that you want. And my critique is not the conversation that you want to have, but how it, what it came from and what the justifications you're using to then draw the conversation to that direction. I think that is irresponsible because I think it caused material harm to mostly roughly young men who are in your audience that are now are even more confused about consent and I, about women's yeah. agency. I understand what you're saying. I just, I totally disagree. I think that I we need to have way more conversations about the different types of agencies that exist in a sexual dynamic. I don't see I any of you. those conversations happening ever. You can All make them is, happen. I, and that's what I did by amplifying Mindwave's tweet. I think that we talk a lot in society mm -hmm. about the empowerment of everybody to have casual sex, but we don't seem to talk about a lot of the ramifications of that. And we don't really have good conversations about how to approach it or any of the problems surrounding it. Okay, okay, I understand. What you're saying is, and uh, this might sound like a, a stretch, so if you want to laugh at it, laugh. I think if we want to talk about the over-representations of uh, Jewish people and in high institutions of power, maybe like a, a lecture about the Holocaust is not the place where you should start bringing that up, you know? And that's what I mean with context. Like, there, there are, I'm sure, millions of tweets that could have referenced agency. All I'm saying is, I'm not saying that this conversation shouldn't be had. I'm saying there must have been better tweets than this woman getting stealth and then being awkward about it that were worthy having this conversation on the background. What other and possible it, tweet could I possibly jump on to talk about a woman's agency unless there's a case where a woman is not exerting agency? Like what else, like what other kind of conversation could I... Like if there's a woman changing her oil and she posts it, like I actually did my own oil change today. Should I quote to you that and be like, that's amazing. Like, I hope that you're just as assertive in sexual circumstances when you're under a man as you are oil changing when you're under your car. Like, well, like you what other what? thing? Like, uh, like this is the only way to start you want. conversation no, no, no. jump on a tweet, because if that's the case, then if people followed your prescription of not trauma dumping, you wouldn't have any trauma dumping tweets to jump on anymore. And we wouldn't be able to have any discourse. Like, and also calling these things trauma dumping, like the, the implicit harm in trauma dumping is when someone does it like in a group of friends, right? Or with a friend, like this can be a method to trauma bond, which is going to lead to harmful relationships, right? Like, why are we saying that we have a problem with somebody expressing their trauma online? Like there's because a trauma line dumping, between you shouldn't trauma be rewarded. dumping. You shouldn't be rewarded for sharing your trauma. That's not but a healthy do we agree thing that that there's someone's mind. So there is a there is a line between trauma dumping and a sexual assault survivor like sharing their experience that we have seen can be beneficial for other people who have been through that for their mental health. Like, yes, it's, I don't think it's beneficial. Really? No, I think that if you want to get online and you want to say, hey, stealthing is wrong. Guys shouldn't do it. And it's bullshit. That's fine. But when you start sharing personal stories of like rape, rape experience, unless you're trying to like call out or hold like a certain figure accountable or something, I think that that sort of like sharing of trauma online, I think that is insanely toxic. It's super damaging. Do you damaging think that it doesn't health. show to other people who have been through that experience that it is actually possible to speak what out? Is it and showing that, it like... that like you can be awkward and not say anything and get raped over and over again either? No, I don't think it's helpful. No, that, you can, that, you can, that you can go through that experience and speak out despite the fact that people are going to reduce what you just 
did down to that. Speak out about what? And brag that you're going to do it again and again? No, it's a, it's the opposite of progress. Like, hey, guys, I just want you to know I went driving four times last week. I got hit by a drunk driver every single time, and I'm driving to Orlando tomorrow. I, no one's going to stop me. Like, what the fuck? Why would I congratulate somebody for making tweets like that? No. Okay. So uh, well, why do you need to speak on it at all? Why do you have to jump on it if you're not going to have any... Because what they're presenting any... is dog shit. They're saying that I was too awkward to speak out against something and it happened. And it's like, what the fuck? If you can't, if like, and then there's Mindwave's quote tweet and then we're back at the beginning. Okay, all right. So Stabby. No, no Mindwave's Stabby, was... Stabby's been waiting for a long time and it was her turn. And friend, please. Okay, so what you're referring to is trauma dumping. This is inconvenient. I'm kind of old fashioned. I'm probably the oldest person here right now. So I get why this makes us uncomfortable. But what you're referring to is trauma dumping which I don't really agree with, um, could also be just because we're all online and it's the new way of speak up girl. After Me Too, uh, women were more comfortable coming forward with sexual assaults as were men, which Destiny, I think you agree with me because I think I've heard this from you before a while ago that we need men to come forward more often, that we need men to be safe as well. And, and if men are coming forward after Me Too, then it's not exactly trauma dumping. It's yeah, it's a fine line. Maybe we need to educate about how far you go into some of these details. But because we're all online right now, especially during the pandemic, if we're all saying, yes, this happened to me too, then it's a bigger field and it's pushing some of the old world ways back. Um, uh, social media pressure and more and more people being educated helped us pressure the FBI to expand the definition of sexual assault, which has been long overdue. So I don't think you can just say trauma dumping is is crazy online. If you know if somebody's going to like give this long tweet thread about something, they're usually in today's world trying to like bring attention to something that we all need to work on together, especially when it's come to racism, especially when it's come to you know how the police treat the homeless, et cetera. I know that that can feel trauma dumpy, but maybe that's on us. Maybe we're all talking about the responsibility of people who are posting themselves out there. People who, yes, are private people, but have free speech. You're still a private person. If you say, oh, fuck, in the middle of a church during a wedding, you're still a private person. You just fucked up a little bit, you know? So you still have to be aware that maybe it's not just the responsibility of the people who are posting, but it's also our responsibility to, one, not get as offended, to, two, understand that this is just a new and evolved and adapted version of speak up about these things so that we can stop them. Because what was really weird to me is that we're hearing two versions of speak or don't speak. The don't speak up is don't trauma dump on Twitter. Don't tell everybody all of these things and get yourself involved. And then involved. And then we're, the whole thing was started because, oh, if women aren't speaking up, then they're not mature enough for sex. You guys are going to talk about the two things in your head that are different and, and that are a mind fuck to all of these women. That's a mind fuck, but I will see your mind fuck to women and I will raise you. This is a mind fuck to literally everyone, especially our young people who destiny, you said you want to live in a much better world where these things are not happening. And I actually believe that that's true. I believe that about you. And one of the ways we're going to do it is making sure that we are on point and we do not fuck up this discourse for our children because they can help us get this better. So you guys need to figure out which one. Is it don't trauma dump and shut the fuck up or is it speak the fuck up or there wouldn't be any rapists? Like, so I actually, ah. I, I think it's perfectly fine to speak up. Like in all situations, if you want to say it um, like to your parents, to the police, to your therapist, if you want to vent it on Twitter, that's fine. Uh, but expect the reaction appropriate to like where you have spoken up. If you vent your trauma on Twitter, a public pro platform, you don't private your account or anything like that, you should expect engagement. And I think for you to present it to people, I think if you were to present it to people as if they, they, as if they shouldn't expect engagement, you are setting them up for failure. You're setting them up to be triggered. And it's just bad, unrealistic advice in, as to what the platform even is. But if all the engagement causes Sorry. is bad things, we can still tell the person engaging that way, hey, that was bad engagement, right? We can say, hey, maybe yeah. you shouldn't engage that way. Go ahead. Be upset. I think that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, but I mean, that's pretty upset? much. Okay. So, uh, Stabby, finish uh, your point. Um, we have to. No, Cherry. Yeah. So I, I just think that you can, you can say that, but we can't tell people to, sp like, Me Too wouldn't have happened at all. And, you know, good and bad alike, I'll, I'll admit there were some yeah. bad things, too. No, it definitely. Wouldn't it have happened at all. people with thick skin to post on Twitter and to deal with the engagement. 
It does. And you're not telling them to just have thick skin. You're telling them to not talk back at all. No, no, no. I'm telling them, you post, say what you want to say, understand the real, like the realistic expectations of what that platform is and what is going to happen. But That's it. Woman that is going they, how does, how does anyone develop thick skin if they don't have realistic expectations it's, of their actions? It's just right. But if a woman says that's not it, deal with it. Sorry, Stabby. I, I, I lost a lot. Can I go? No, Stabby. Okay. Stabby, come on, oh, okay. please. I was just saying, if you're going to say that and you're going to say get a thicker skin, that's 100% fine. But if a woman says, look at all of these misogynists who are behaving this way to me, you can't get offended by that. Thicker skin, I guess, cheery. What do you mean? I, I'm not upset by anything that's happened on Twitter. Okay, um, but mine, you're mine. acting as though they are. So here's the thing is that you are acting as though they are saying that you're not allowed to say what you're saying. They are simply saying, this is why what you, the way that you engage cause harm, right? And I'm not super familiar with all of your tweets on this, so I, I don't want to get into the specifics on you. But all they're responding with is, this is why engaging this way causes harm in our opinion, right? Um, why do you take that as them trying to say that you're not allowed to be on Twitter? Like, why does it get escalated to that level that it's like we should be allowed to engage in this way? It's like, yeah, we're saying you can, but expect criticism. And maybe instead of just being like, well, stay mad, like look at why they're saying that what you're doing causes harm. And if you don't feel like it causes harm, explain why you don't feel like it does. Like, like this Isn't stay that what's mad. what's going on right I, now? I, I don't feel like that was articulated. I feel like it was just stay mad or, or be mad. I, I feel like <laughs> the arguments have been made like as, as in regards to the cell thing situation. And we're just, we keep circling back to, well, you shouldn't quote tweet people on, on Twitter. Well, no, you shouldn't Denied quote tweet people. If quote tweeting them isn't going to actually give advice that they are going to take or anyone is going to take. Because like I have tried to explain, and you said that I accused people of victim blaming earlier. I did not. I told, tried to explain why this is going to come across as a little victim blamey to people who have experienced sexual assault, who is supposedly the audience that you are speaking to with the fucking advice. So they're not going to listen. So it doesn't have any kind of positive effect. It just kicks people who are already traumatized off the fucking internet because they're ashamed now because they're getting harassed everywhere. Okay. True. I guess maybe we should do all of our criticism on prime panels. I think this is actually more effective. I would, I would no. say so too. It's uh, not... uh, let's go. That's the point. Uh, uh, Katie, quick, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Um, so Sherry, um, I, I understand that Twitter is a public platform. But let's not pretend the reason why I called it this person a private person is not because like they privated their account. It's because we all know who Destiny is and we all know that Destiny didn't just retweet someone else's retweet. There was like three days of mayhem where this person literally changed their name to like Destiny is shitty or something like that and then privated their account because Destiny knows who he is and he knows that whatever he retweets might cause a lot more people. You can expect engagement when you're on Twitter, but most people are not going to get the type of engagement that this person probably got when Destiny decided their tweet is going to be their prompt to talk about something they want. And I was gonna to say to you, Destiny, if you wanna like talk about agency more, I can open a Twitter. I have a shit ton of dystopian like sex stories what I where I did not like assert my agency. And you can like ramp up of that instead of picking up random women on Twitter that are just trying to talk about a shitty experience that they had. You know, I don't mind doing that for you. There you go. I think we need to keep bullying people until they realize that trauma dumping on Twitter is not healthy. It's not good. It shouldn't be supported. We need to stop this behavior. Yeah. We need to shut it down until we realize what the hell is going on. <laughs> okay. I disagree. Okay. Oh, earlier, earlier, just a quick thing. By a trauma so, dump, though. I will okay, give you so, that oh, I need to, we need to talk about the difference real quick. There's a difference between a trauma dump and holding people in power accountable, okay? If there's something actionable in a positive way after a series of messages, it's not the same quite as a trauma dump. If a bunch of people just get online and they start venting about horrible experiences and other people support them and they get camaraderie in that and then they get in this weird mind circle of like being a victim and being rewarded for it, that's a really mentally unhealthy thing. There's a difference this between that versus comment. somebody tweeting out like, hey, there are very powerful people in this area that need to be held accountable. Even if you don't name a name, you can argue that like these types of things are holding people to account. That type of public um, venting is a lot different than just here are the bad things that happened to me. There's nothing this positive about it. This person did not boom. trauma dump. 
they didn't even know that what they went through was sexual assault until people started commenting on their tweet. The no, I'm talking about comment. We can, we can say that, sure, we can say that wait, wait, she wait. wasn't Please. trauma dumping. I'm just saying that in general, it's like a bad Please, thing. Please, I'm asserting my agency. Look, I'm so brave. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're um, a senior agency, why'd you stop talking when I talked? Oh, oh, my God. Because, <laughs> because it fun. was socialized. I guess I'm the guy to, that decided at the start respect. of the night how it was going to end. I'm because I was kidding. socialized and asserting my agency is very you're difficult right. okay. for me. So I can so inform determined. you of that and then you can be considerate of my issues if you want to. You know, okay. it's I'm like reciprocation. Destiny, yeah. check your DMs. Uh, Katie, go ahead. So um, the only potential thing that I see to trauma dumping was after this person literally just relayed an experience when she was like, men stop doing that. And people were like, you know, that's like illegal what they did to you. You know, that's sexual assault, right? The only reason why she kept bringing out more tweets and more information was because you and Mindwave were tweeting about it. And she needed to add context and shit like that. That would be like the only thing that I would consider trauma dumping. When she gave that big tweet about he raped me harder, that was literally because people like you and like Mindwave were saying that she did a bad job handling being stealth. I, I don't know. It seems really disgenuous. <laughs> The tweet was literally in response to you. You were quoted in it. Like, I have a picture. Like, I know I don't just keep pictures of all your fucking tweets. Um, <laughs> and you deleted them all, but I do have one of that one. So wait, I'm in very response happy to what? He deleted them actually. I, I uh, my friend only does that because he is uh, worried about rumors, oh, right. not because he's uh, trying to hide his tweets. Um, or so he's told me. I haven't talked to him in a while. But um, <clears throat> uh, the I, the only time. I think I ever directly quoted her is when she said something about like I'm I'm leaving Twitter or something. I think it was the only time. It but I don't doesn't think I matter. The, you yeah. know who you are. You know what this discourse was. You well, no, 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 no. Hold on, no, 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 wait. I'm not denying anything. I'm just saying that like I'm not like interacting with her a lot because I, I think Spectre's trying to make it sound like I was going back and forth with her. No, no, I tried to I be like very clear that Mindwaves quoted tweeted her, and then you quote tweeted Mindwaves. True, but the damage had already been done. I I hold Mindwaves much sure, more accountable fine. for this world being off the internet than you. Yeah, I'm just trying to get off this point that like I don't I don't care much about like her individual story. That wasn't my focus on this. It was the general discourse around the event. That's what I was. Yes, but and a lot of the criticism is that you did. What just happened is that if I speak out about my sexual assault, I may end up getting harassed off the internet. Do you think some people might take this that way, and that might be the message that they get? And do you think that the people who, you again, again you're... Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay, so then the people that you're trying to speak to, right? Uh -huh. The people who you are trying to give advice to, we've already established why they're not going to take the advice. Yeah, I don't know if I'm trying to give advice comes across like as that. victim really for my audience or whatever. Like, I, don't, I don't care about this person. I'm trying to give advice to this person, right? They, like, most of these people are too far gone, I think, for anybody to say anything to them about any... You said you were trying to give advice to sexual assault victims. I, yeah, to people who are in my audience, you, like, my why your advice is going to come across to people in my audience or in my purview. I'm, I'm not under any illusion that this person that I'm quote tweeting at or any of the people online that think I'm a rapist or whatever are going to listen to anything I have to say. That's I think the only thing you told your audience is that they need to worry less about whether a woman is actually comfortable or not, because if they're not capable of asserting their agency, maybe there's something fucked about them. Come on, and that I think is that's so pretty much the only thing that you did. That is like the worst faith. Uh, you have conceded to so faith. much good advice on this panel for you to have that takeaway right now. I think that no one benefited, you. benefited from Destiny's advice. Okay, I think women know that they need to assert their agency more. That's, That's not the, true, not though. Stage. Because I think we hear a lot today this weird idea, and I see this over and over again on this 2X chromosome subreddit that pops up. I see when people talk about this, this idea that like men are these like inherently violent predatory creatures, and if you say anything, he might kill you. And that was a lot of the responses that I was seeing. Was like, you can't just speak up when a man tries to stealth you. He might murder you. So it seems like there are a lot of people that need to hear, no, you can speak up. And you can stop some of these things from happening. You don't have and to do be like think, a perfect victim. Like do that, maybe... please. No, I don't no. feel like that's what the individual was even saying there. That individual was saying, this individual. is what I am. Okay. I don't care about her but, individual story. But, but I, I get that. It's very clear to me. But I'm saying sexual assault victims in general are going to take the way that you went about this as victim blaming. They are not going to take the advice, right? I, I swear to God, you are setting this up where somebody has to come out with their scars and be like, raise their hand, be like, actually, Destiny's advice is good here. That is that like what you need to know that his advice is solid? No. Okay. Well, then what is wrong with telling somebody who cannot establish their own boundaries and advocate for themselves during sex that they should stop having casual sex? I the keep context. I feel like we can speak to this and then we circle right the fuck back it. to it. Hey. Um, I think. 
I think the context matters. So it's not like just a, a consensual regular interaction. I've said this multiple times. She was stealthed. It's not the same as like uh, establishing agency in like a reasonable relationship. Uh, it, th she was sexually assaulted, right? The second thing is that there's another element here, which is, uh, fuck, I lost it. Stabby? What was the second one? Which one? Where? Sorry, I just picked up my quilt. You're good. Yeah, it was context. And then, oh yeah, the casual sex argument being like dumb and doesn't make any sense. Right, I remember. Um, so those would be the reasons why his advice is literally pointless to women. I think what it told men is that they shouldn't be as concerned because, you know, How can you women should be able to. Reading from any man reading my tweet. Destiny so that, says that women have a really thing. hard time asserting themselves and that they need to learn to do a better job of it. That must mean that I can rape more women. How, like, how does that ever logically follow? No, but that doesn't work that way, right? We agree that accidental rape can happen. So we agree that if someone is in your audience and he's hearing this discourse and then they have an encounter with someone and that someone is not raising and they're not establishing their agency, then maybe they're like, more empowered to do so implicitly by some of the comments you made because you're basically saying this the problem is with the woman right i'm not saying that you're telling your audience rape people i'm saying that if you can understand that women can contribute to men accidentally rape them you can also understand that certain statements that you make might also contribute to mentalities of men to accidentally rape women that works both ways. I understand what you're saying. I just, I don't ever think that that could possibly be a reading of what I've been talking about. But that's the, the criticism is that a lot of people did read that as what you I, said. No, I haven't heard of a single case of that. I've heard of people accusing people of doing it because they have a total misunderstanding of everything I'm saying. But I don't, I don't think that if, de if I'm saying, hey, women need to do a better job at asserting agency in these situations, because right now you have a really hard time doing it. I don't think a man would hear that like, Oh, bae. So if a woman's not asserting her agency, I can rape her. I don't, I just, no, I don't like that. But that's like very conscious thinking, right? We agreed that most people don't go, I'm going to rape a bitch today. That's not how it works, right? It's about allowing men to be okay with pushing boundaries. You know, it's just a guy thing and whatever. We, we discussed this and nobody thinks when we tell men don't rape, it's meaningless because most men that rape, most rapes don't happen when a guy wakes up in the morning and decides they're going to rape a chick. That's not how it is. It's this discourse that some guys have heard that might think now they are a tiny bit less accountable for what they're going to do. And maybe stealthing is just pushing boundaries. And then instead of stealthing being designated in this panel as a sexual assault, like unequivocally as a bad thing that happened, we couldn't even reach it on this panel. So we it makes sense that, that it's bad. Might... I don't know what you're talking about. You can agree that it's bad. But and that you... it should be illegal, that it's okay. a violation of consent. I feel I feel like we have said that several times, but you keep coming back to that somehow we're not in agreement here on that. I think Destiny clarified at the beginning that he's not really I, I think he said that stealthing is wrong, is toxic and stuff, but he's not willing to label it as sexual assault, right? We can label it as sexual assault, but the problem is the brains just go out the window when we start talking about things that are labeled as sexual assault. Because now it's okay, like, well, I do you understand. expect a woman to stop something that's sexual assault? Well, I mean, it depends Sherry, on the Sherry, I would like to, to jump <laughs> off what you said just now, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's this issue here, both with the Twitter thing and with men in general. We assume that the status quo is just how it is. Men are going to rape, so women need to defend themselves. If you're going to post on Twitter, people will bully you and criticize you unfairly. Both situations should be accepted, and we just need to counteract for them. When we can reduce rape by giving good advice to men, by raising agency for women, Destiny, but raising agency for women, Cannot be, cannot exist in the context where a woman is being sexually assaulted. Why not? That's the because, only time when your agency matters. That's the time when your agency matters the most. Well, my argument is that when we're talking about accidental rapes, we're forgetting about real rape. And if I consider stealthing as a real rape, then my first reading of your tweet was: if you're being raped, you and you are not calling out your rapist for raping you, then 
you do not have the um, emotional maturity to engage in sex. No, that's because if you understand stealthing no, 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 to be a there's rape, a huge then difference. that's what it says. There's a huge difference between expecting somebody to just verbally assert a boundary versus fighting off somebody that's violently raped. Those are two w wildly different expectations. I think also, if you I... only understand um, like rape. Like the the. This is why I wanted to prevent the whole mean. framing as rape because this is why it just destroys the conversation. Like I, this is like I'd, totally not. Yeah, sorry, I'd like to go even further than um where where Destiny's going. I feel oh, like God. you're not mature enough for casual sex if you can't communicate afterwards what you liked or did not like in sex. I feel like the fact that somebody could um articulate to Twitter rather than to contact their casual sex partner to let them know that they didn't enjoy that experience. Yeah, that they should. Yes, that they should probably take a step back. They shouldn't engage in casual sex for a while. Yeah, I think what you just said is crazy. The individual? I'm sorry. What, what, do to, what, do, what do they have to gain from calling him up and being like, hey, the fact that you stealthed me was really shitty. Um, and like, That's... reliving that trauma rather than just ghosting them. Like, don't they have a right to just ghost them? You have a right to ghost, but I feel like okay. this, is, um, this is falling so in a bad pattern of like not articulating or not communicating what you want out of sex. Can I ask okay, you a question? But if, it, if the act is already done, why do they need to call a future girl from getting stealth then. So what, what I think what Shiri actually, if I may, I think what Shiri actually needs is I think Shiri needs to run a poll so that she can have the most perfect situation ever to make her point and see how many women she can find that that actually follows and then you can come back and have this conversation i think that's think, what you need what do you <laughs> destiny do you really think that a girl noticing that a guy has stealth and then telling him after the fact hey you shouldn't have done that is like new information to him it that's might going be to that's the whole doing point it? Dude, Dude, I had a girl one time after I had a sexual interaction. Do you some guys I really? I had a girl afterwards when I had a sexual interaction with her. That, like, it was it was incredibly awkward for a variety of reasons. But I remember that she messaged me afterwards, and she told me a lot about things that she liked or things that I did that she thought wasn't good in the interaction. That actually helped me a lot in guiding me through like future situations. I wasn't doing like bad things at the time. It's like I'm not fucking rape her. I just hate this fucking bitch. It was just like stuff that I genuinely didn't understand. I was like way younger. I didn't have a good head for like certain types of sexual relationships. And then afterwards, she sent me kind of stuff. I was like, oh, this is actually super sick. This is really important. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And then like I avoided that stuff in the future. You don't have an obligation to do it but damn if you're brave enough to hop onto twitter and do it fuck maybe you could shoot the guy at least the fucking tweets on it no i mean i think that but just putting it out there on an anonymous twitter account is very different than reaching out to somebody who like knows me personally um but that aside point i mean I just don't understand. It's just a hard buy when you're like, she's just like so frail and traumatized from the experience. She can't say anything to it. But then she's like hopping on Twitter. It's like, oh boy, I'm about to tweet about this experience for like two fucking days. Like, damn, like, what, what is that? Are you like super triggered or traumatized by it? Or like, could you shoot the dude a message and then block him afterwards? Like, I don't know. But what is what is the purpose of shooting him that message, right? What I just said. Maybe the guy didn't her. realize that he was like pushing boundaries too much. He's like, oh, fuck, okay, like, I need dude. To kill him. No, no, no. I'm sorry. If, if, forever if there, whoa, 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 whoa. If, we, if you start having sex with a girl, and you are wearing a condom, is the expectation not that you are going to be wearing that condom at the end of sex? Do we not all fucking just intuitively understand this? Are there actually guys out there, you think, like, that I think there's a you lot of take this off anytime you feel like it? I think it? there's a lot of conventional sex advice around protection that is really bad. And people do you do think have some like guys that. legitimately think the way this works is that the girl has to remind me to keep it on every five minutes, or that means I get to take it off and it's fine? Here's, here's, something, here's something that I think might be possible, okay? I think guys might think, you know, we're supposed to have condoms. We knew it. We but we know we should have condoms. But you know what? Fucking, if we're having a good enough time, and she trusts me, I should be able to take the condom off. It should be fine. And you know what? If she doesn't want me to take it off, she'll be able to feel when I start fucking her that I have it. She'll say something if she doesn't like it, right? She'll notice if I'm taking it off. Like, of course, I'm reaching down, right? Now, that's not right. There's a variety of things wrong with it. But, but I you'd totally call that see accidental rape. You would consider I don't care it about accidental. the labels. It's brain dead. I don't care about the labels. But I'm saying oh I can see God. a guy having that image in his mind and just going forward with it. And like just him not realizing like how incredibly fucking horrible or shitty or stupid this is. I could see that being the case. Do you think the fact that the girl who spoke up about having that experience got bullied off of Twitter, right? And then mm -hmm. this was never like brought up the entire time, what you just said, which is, I agree, something that we could clarify to guys. It's a little bit simpler would indicate that anyone who speaks up about their experience with sexual assault is going to get bullied off of social media unless they did everything perfectly to not get sexually assaulted. As long as you're not saying some real stupid fucking shit. Yeah. What was the stupid shit initially? What? Like, uh, well, the stupid wait. shit initially was this happened three times and I felt too awkward to say anything, but here I am tweeting about it. That was the stupid shit. 
Wait, she didn't say that she noticed it. She clarified later that she didn't even notice it while it was happening. It happened well, afterwards. Well, she could have put that in the original tweet. To... We would have avoided this Dude, whole conversation. Then, no, huh? she said that before. I, I feel like when she, that before. She what takes... is the whole point? Hold on. I feel like when she takes her situation, right, being stealthed three times, which is like she's the victim. She's not at fault for that. And then she ends it with men do better. I... I feel like you guys find it to be irrational that some men, I don't know, would respond afterwards. I, why? You're why? Here why? Because does you're that... upset. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! You're here because you're upset that women were responding poorly to men telling them to take responsibility for men's sexual I'm, behaviors and their I'm own. I'm here because I was. And now you're going to sit there and turn Gabby. around. Oh man! Gabby, I was just um, asked no, to be your on the argument. Panel. Okay, your argument here has been that women who are having a problem with this aren't ready for sex. And now you're going to switch that around and say, a woman says men do better, a very innocuous, very okay statement, one that we actually need to hear. And you're like, you're, you can't be upset that men are going to be upset with that. Oh, hon, come on. Yeah, I, I think when you, yeah. paint, when you paint all men as um, potential rapists and people who are going to just stealth you uh, and, and paint that worldview to women, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably a uh, little wrong. I was meant to better call you said that here. Yeah. How well, how is how is that, asking though. men to do better? Yeah, how is telling men do better, calling all men rapists? How is my how is me That's telling my kids that all of them are rapists? failing? I don't know. I yeah, they are they are kind I, of failing. See, and can, like, pick when up, these go. things happen, I don't just look at the woman. I like to consider the men as well. That's there are two people participating in sex. All right, I get it that you guys are zoned in and focused on one side that you want to correct, but I think that sex is something we can all work on. And we can all discuss. One tweet said men do better. All of the others said women are too emotionally immature for sex or some version of something really cringe and creepy. But let's go ahead and narrow down on people saying what actually needs to be said. Men do better. Because you know what? We do need to have men do better. And we do need to teach boys about stealthing because that's my True. son. And as the California law begins to go through the rest of the United States of America, my son could be in trouble for sexual battery. Do better. Teach men this. Destiny was talking about a possible utopian world that we're going to start getting towards. And that's how not how it is now. It becomes that when we change the language around it. It becomes that when we help our sons do better. We are so upset that, um, oh, that might make men feel a little defensive. I don't give a shit. I feel a little defensive all the time and I go, oh, I'm offended. But the minute I look at something and go, I'm offended, it's probably something that would make me a Karen if I didn't stop for five seconds, take a deep breath and reread what I just saw and just be a big girl. I'm sure the boys can handle it too. Then why, why are women so offended when we say women be big girls and be willing to talk to your partner during we're sex? Only telling you, we we're like. only telling you we cannot, we're only telling you that we cannot take responsibility for when a man we trust and have been with decides to stealth and and we are not going to take responsibility for his stealthing act. But you're not asking really yourself to have, on, It's just having the okay, agency ahead, to assert herself. Just have the agency ahead, to assert herself. So Katie? This is, this is really frustrating, right, Terry? Because you asked me like 10 minutes ago, why do you keep coming back to this point? Why do you keep bringing up that this is rape? We all agreed this is bad. And then we spent the next 10 minutes calling a guy stealthing a girl a sexual partner that she's meant to then later contact and inform him that he made her uncomfortable. So oh, no, we, we, communication no, 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 and no, no, casual no, no. sex is like, uh, let's go, Katie. not a bad thing to talk Katie. about. For it, it's not, it's not good communication. The communication was had, a boundary was set, condom, a boundary was broken, no condom. Even if we pretend that she saw it midway through, which she didn't, but let's pretend that she did, and she was awkward about it and didn't say anything, that is still not the takeaway from the story. And that's the frustrating thing. So I can't, I can't use the word, on. I can't use the word rape because it's brain dead. We can't call it sexual assault, but when we don't call it either of those things, in 10 minutes, half of this panel seems to forget that stealthing is actually a bad thing that Who robs the agency. That? I think Destiny. everybody still said that. Just let me know Katie. when I can respond. Destiny. Katie. When you frame the story of that girl 
as she did not express her agency to her sexual partner, you are contextualizing that situation as something that was mutual, consensual, and two sexual partners working together to reach harmony. And you know that's not what happened because you seem to understand what stealthing is and you say you have a problem with it. So if you want to frame a different situation, if we want to talk about communication in casual sex or not casual sex and talk about agency and communication, I'm down with that. But okay, if I you're going quick, to then, then project quick, that on this situation, I, okay, I then it's say, wrong. I just want to say, okay, I'm going to drop the hottest take here, okay? I think rape is bad, okay? And I think people shouldn't rape or stealth people, I, all right? I just want to, I just want to get that out there. What rape I feel is like some people are that. a little bit confused, so I just want to go ahead and say that, okay? Raping people, stealthing people, those are bad things, okay? Sorry if I, I was um, unclear about that earlier. Okay. All right. <laughs> we got it then. Do I get to respond? <laughs> oh, respond. Fine, Katie. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, Excuse me. So, Katie, I think it's super reasonable to, um, when you're giving advice to people about having casual sex, to encourage communication about what you want before, during, and after sex. And I, are you on the phone? Um, no. Oh, it's, okay. Um, my cat and the earphones and the whole thing. Yeah, sorry. And I, I, I think we all understand that she didn't find out that the condom was taken off until after intercourse. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that when you remove yourself from the situation, there isn't a risk to be faced. There's no threat to be faced. The actual sexual encounter was what you thought it was going to be. The only violation that you felt was afterwards, which is like a risk to your your physical health, um, potential like pregnancy. There, That risk shouldn't prevent you from articulating that this was wrong to another individual. And I feel like the inability to do that is probably a, it's probably indicative of you having an issue with confrontation or conflict resolution, which can be very dangerous if you are engaging in frequent casual sex. I would I, tell that person to take a step back and really consider why they don't want to resolve a conflict or um, even voice an issue in that regard. I understand. And if we want to work from the perspective that the entire sexual interaction happened, and then she found out later, I think it's um, very unlikely that the only issue with her finding out later was like her worrying about STDs and pregnancy. Because I think we can all just stand that if we realize that our consent has been violated and that this person Wait, broke the boundary the that was- stealthing, right? What? That's the issue, the issue with stealthing. The issue with stealthing is that it, it breaks consent. Okay, but why are you requesting for a condom? Like, what, what is the reason why people ask for a condom? It, it doesn't for matter. And to prevent pregnancy. It doesn't matter. No, but so I feel like when we have the conversation in that regard and we, <laughs> and we, we go, what, outside of what it even means that, to want a condom, absurd. we're putting like in people's disconnect. minds like almost violence when, but when somebody doesn't wear a condom. But, so do you understand that like even if the sex was enjoyable otherwise, if you find out afterwards that your consent was violated in some way, say that they videotaped it and yet the video never got released, like you can still feel a little bit less okay about that sex. Like that could be a little bit no, more scarring putting other stuff in context. Absolutely. But do you feel like you're so traumatized you can't tell the person, hey, this was wrong. Don't do that or I'm not going to have sex with you again. Do you again, feel like I just you should be like able to articulate that? Guys, I, so I don't feel like they're going to have sex with that person again um, if they did this I and agree. they know about it. So also second, um, I think that most guys, because they're also not uh, retards, I think this is the word that we've been using tonight, right? Okay, Retarded anyway, children. know that if, know that if you put a condom on at the beginning of sex, you have to wear it until the end of sex, right? The guys outside of that category, there are ways that we can, well, I wouldn't even call it outside of that category. I think they think it's acceptable in the heat of the moment if they can like rationalize in their head that they have a connection with a girl, which again, um, not really something that I'd call casual sex if that's what he's rationalizing in his head at that point. But uh, yeah, I, I don't understand of giving the prescription uh, on Twitter. Just Holy stop shit. having casual sex. The, I'm sorry, but the number of people saying that I'm saying it's the victim's responsibility to educate the abuser. Obviously, the abuser knows what the fuck they did. It's the woman who should just be able to reinforce that boundary to make it clear that this is not what they wanted. You no, know, you just argue against yourself because your your point was that they will inform the guy that he did something wrong. And now you're saying that they know they did what they're wrong. So you have to go back. 
to be for for Go it to back. make sense. So, so, so there's no, it, context there's someone no who is point. going to bring up a memory of sex that is now a very negative experience for them due to the fact that it is in the context of their consent being violated, right? And all that's going to happen is a dude's going to get reminded of like something you probably should have already known. Don't take off a condom in the middle of sex. Uh, do you want to respond to that, Cherry or Katie? Yeah, I'm just I'm just going to reiterate. Okay, communication in casual sex happens before, during, and after sex. If you struggle with one or more parts of this, uh, you are probably not mature enough to have casual sex, or you need to take a step back and really be able to um, create boundaries that you yourself respect enough to make other people respect as well. Can I so ask you sure a question on that? Can I just ask one clarifying question, please? We're saying <laughs> Everyone that if questions. somebody is sexually assaulted, right? And they don't feel comfortable talking with the person who sexually assaults. The, actually, okay, I won't even say sexually assaults. Let's say the actual thing stealths them, right? Since some people here want to argue whether or not it is. That that person shouldn't be having casual sex at all. Um, I think that they should take a break, break from casual sex. Yes. They feel violated. They feel like they cannot articulate that. They cannot communicate that. They do not want to resolve. Um, Why to have any they conflict resolution right there. They they are in, at higher potential at their next sexual encounter to freeze up. They are not okay. So yes, they so, should stop. So I, then would you agree that you are actually asking them to educate their like uh, assaulter at that point? It's always going to be education when you tell somebody what you want. I have to say something. Okay, but yeah. that's... Hey, Spectre. Okay. Um, I think there's a problem here. If you're going to talk about... I agree with you. I, I don't like the, the narrative of like, if you say no, the guy's going to kill you. I do think it's an implicit thing, like something that has been instilled with women for a very long time since the moment we start like talking about sex to any capacity. And I do agree that we socialize a lot of like relation to trauma. So if you've been violated, if consent has been broken, if your boundaries have been pushed, there's a societal narrative that you are now traumatized and broken and whatever, whatever. I don't like that either. I think you can be stealth and that will be uh, stealthing, uh, sexual assault, rape, whatever you want to call it. And it would just really, really suck because your consent was broken. And maybe the sex was fucking amazing outside of it, but it doesn't matter because boundaries were set and consent was violated and that still counts as sexual assault. But your argument is like the reason why you think this person can now reach out to the person they engaged with is because you don't think they're traumatized to that capacity. And yet then you're arguing that they're so traumatized no. that next time they engage in sex, they won't be able to properly respond. So are they overly traumatized or are they not traumatized enough? I feel like I don't, I don't really understand what you're hearing when I talk. Um, if you have a healthy relationship with casual sex, I think you should be able to communicate this even after after it happens, okay? And if you do not, right? If that if that encounter was traumatizing, right? Which it very I would understand if it's traumatizing. And I think that not being able to articulate that afterwards is maybe like the first sign of it. And then well, I would tell that person to take a step back and stop having casual sex. Okay. They and I think that's super reasonable. I don't understand how that's not reasonable. Just, just so, so, seconds, Katie. so they could articulate it afterwards. They did so on an anonymous Twitter account, but I would understand why if they're traumatized, they may not feel as comfortable reaching out to the person who traumatized them to. If somebody stealthing you traumatizes you, it's probably time to take a step back from casual sex. Okay. 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 Way more challenging situations than that. Okay. Like, uh, if that's really what we're going to end on. All right. Yep. That is what we're going to Final gonna thing, end. Katie. Okay. I disavow. So, um, I'm, I'm happy Destiny kind of said it because I think that's just the core. Um, so in my head, I replace stealthing with anything else that violates consent. I don't really care if the person was traumatized enough or not. So when I hear you talk, what I hear is you're talking about a regular casual sex encounter where everything went well. And we're disregarding that being stealthed might recontextualize that experience. Now, if you're saying you person, I heard you were being stealth. Now I'm going to assume a lot of things about your ability, what that means. Were, could you have not been stealth in that situation? And are you traumatized about it or not? And now I'm going to tell you whether you should be able to engage in sex or not after that. 
And that is not something that I think any adult should decide for another adult. So I guess we just disagree on the and entitlement of giving advice, advice. And me not telling people what to do. There's okay. a difference. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we uh, give it a try. All right. Uh, to my audience and to anyone else's audience, uh, uh, thank you for being here. First of all, if you've been enjoying this content, right, come to the Twitch channel in case you aren't here already, right? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Prime Kai, P R I M E C A Y E S. Ch come by, check it out. We have panels all the time. We have a lot of content for you. Uh, apparently, seven days a week of content. Uh, but uh, we always have more for you. So come on by, hit that follow button right now, in case you haven't done so yet. Hit that follow button. Make sure you know uh, you have uh, notifications on so you know I'm going live. X my point social in my chat for my social media. I got a lot of social media, right? We got the, the Twitters where we tweet occasionally, right? If they know this is going to happen, well, you're not on Twitter. So go uh, follow us on Twitter. Discord is the heart and soul of this conversation. All right, the heart and soul of this uh um, entire community, right? We have online, offline uh, talks. We'd love to have you. We're going to have an open panel after this, right? Because I guess we got to do that. I actually want to go to bed. But like, uh, we're going to have an open panel after this. If you want to be a part of that, you can you can jump in, right? Like open walk-on panel where yes, you uh, at home can be a part of. So jump on in. Uh, and again, hit that follow button. Um, and then YouTube. Uh, if you've missed any of this, and this was a lot, if you missed any of it, go to my YouTube, youtube.com slash primekai. P R I N I M E C Y E S and check that out too, right? So hit that uh, subscribe button and consider becoming a YouTube member, hitting that join button, supporting us that way because we need the help, right? Okay, so I'm going to give an outro to all these amazing individuals and then we'll go from there, all right? Um, and remember, we have content for you tomorrow and right after this, so stick around. Cherry, uh, thank you for coming through. I asked you to come on. You said yes. I was very excited and here you are. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm Cherry, C-H-A-E-I-R-Y. Now I'm on the internet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> she is indeed on the internet. Um, all right. Katie, thank you also for uh, stopping by. Uh, not a streamer, but a person who loves jumping on my panel, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to do the thing I don't usually do. I'm going to link in chat um, episode. The episode on my podcast where we talked about consent and about how rape is too much of broad of a term. If you don't want to hear a bunch of trauma dumping, you can start at around 50 minutes. There are chapters to it. It's a very interesting discussion. Exactly what Destiny want to talk about. Um, I recommend it. I think it's good. Everyone check out uh, that link. Link is in my chat. Uh, we'll go to Spectre. Uh, Spectre, thank you as well, buddy, uh, for hopping on this uh, and being as passionate as you always are. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Um, I guess I just don't think that uh, reminding women they have agency is best done uh, on Twitter when they're venting about being sexually assaulted. I think that we can remind them of that and have that conversation. It's a good conversation to have, but not at the cost of everything involved with that. So maybe I'm crazy. Um, Spectre Zero TV on Twitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, we have Stabby. Um, Stabby, who uh, very kind individual uh, who was... Um, it to me and came on and shared her really uh, traumatizing story, unfortunately. Um, but thank you for being so brave and doing that. You guys, um, I'm at a wielder26 on Twitter. Um, you can follow me if you'd like. I'm not a streamer. I mod for Olake TV on Twitch and it's Olake on YouTube. Um, if you like want to try to get spicy with me, I'm, I'm like really calm, chill, but um, I I'm stabby for a reason. It's my army nickname. So uh, thank you guys for having me on. Prime, you have been great. Um, Destiny, if you ever like have a panel talking about why we need to talk about um, enthusiastic consent and how we can make that better, if you could like have one of your people tag me in that and I could watch that, that would be great. Because if we could get more panels like that instead of what we've seen the last few weeks, that would be great. I would really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you for having me on, guys. Absolutely. And last but not least, uh, we have Steven, a.k.a. Destiny. Um, thanks for uh, uh, coming through and having your I ideas uh, and emotions examined here. Um, appreciate the uh, spirit of discourse. I hope that we created more rape defenders and turned more people away from being rapists than we turned people into rapists. At the end of the day, that's all we can truly hope for. So, You are such a wonderful human being. I love I you so much. Okay. Thank you.